Hello and welcome to the At The Races Cheltenham Preview 2023. Wherever you're watching, whether that's YouTube or Facebook or on the At The Races website, we'd love you to get in touch. You can fill in the comments uh, down below. You can drop us a tweet. We welcome your uh, contact with us. In fact, we encourage it, courtesy of our, our sponsors today, Betfred. They're going to throw in a couple of uh, free bets during the course of this evening if you get in touch as well. So do get stuck in. And without further ado, let me introduce you to our three fabulous panellists this evening. Oh, how the first. How disappointing. The first. <laughs> I, must go, I must go to Speak first. for yourself. Many will be wondering how we persuaded to him to come back. But the truth is... I wanted to. Just when he thought he was out, we dragged him back in. The Cod father oh. is back. Jamie Cod, it's good to have you back, Jamie. Very happy. I've missed that. you. We worked out well, six years since we've done this in the flesh, you and I. Yeah, back in the, the very start. Yeah, yeah a few virtual the, ones the along the way. It's good to see you. Yeah, good no, to one, see you. no one could sound more excited at this point, Colin. Great to have you back. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Also with us, and still I'm pleased, again, it's a long time since I've introduced you in the flesh, mm. but still undefeated. To be fair, you haven't been near a boxing ring. In the best way to stay undefeated. Still undefeated. <laughs> Golden gloves. Kevin Blake is with us as well. I have lots of insights from Kevin during the and a few big price selections. Yeah, yeah, scattered in amongst the few shorter ones. I'm, I'm but... sure. I'm sure. It's been a long time since Mrs. Mulma, though, hasn't it? Long time. Still living on that. Ah, sure, look, it's nice to have had one, Matt. William you can, Darby, uh, when, you when, can, when, how when... easily you mock and forget. You, when... you can live a long time on a 25 to 1. Harder to live a long time on a 6 to 4 winner, but we <laughs> welcome you anyway, Matt. It's good to have you on board. A man who needs no, no introduction. Thank you, Boise. I'm just uh, pleased I'm the only one on this panel you haven't seen in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of time. Right. Uh, we are going to get stuck in uh, to our preview evening here uh, at the races, uh, 2023 Cheltenham preview evening in association with Betfred. We're not going to do it in the tired old way, starting with the Supreme and running through. We've broken it up into sections. I'm going to kick you off with the championship races, so we'll gallop through the championship races and we'll start with the... Um, the champion hurdle. Uh, we must start with Constitution Hill, um, who dominates the market two to seven. Uh, Constitution Hill. Uh, I can't remember a shorter price favourite lining up in this for a long old time. And we've talked a lot about him over here, Jamie. So I want your view. I want the view from the other side of the Irish Sea about this horse. I, you can't knock him for what he's done so far. Like Supreme Novices last year, we probably tried to knock him, and then we couldn't. Uh, it was phenomenal his performance. Uh, actually was in Nicky's a few weeks ago, rode out and went up the gallop and... Oh, um, he lets you go in and ride out? Do yeah, yeah, no, no, none of the good ones now, but just... <laughs> yeah. um, but I was there, pulled up at the top of the gallop, was walking back down through the trees and um, there was Constitution Hill just in front of me. I had to ask what it was. He's just a very unassuming horse. Um, you know, nothing pretty to look at, but... Obviously, puts his best performances on the track. And, um, yeah, it's hard to knock him. It's hard to knock There's him. There's a link to one of our other panellists there. Nothing much to look at, but very effective. <laughs> Who should we go to? Um, Kevin. I mean, it's like, a lot of British racing fans will think, if Constitution Hill turns up, this is one race where we're out of reach of the Irish Challenge. It's, it's probably fair comment, Sean. Look, I think if you rewound, hypothetically, 20 years, I think this would be built up as more of a clash between Constitution Hill and State Man, you know, because both of them are, are essentially unbeaten in, in the greater scheme of things and largely untested. So why, why are we... I, I, it I think we're better at measuring horses oh. now. You know, I think we have, look, Constitution Hill has been winning a long way, but we have kind of deeper analysis these days that, that kind of puts a bit more context in it, and he seems to be something a long way out of the ordinary. Yeah, the numbers are there, aren't they? Yeah. It's not just the visuals. Like the Supreme, the time was obviously... Now, no, you, if you wanted to pick, and I'm not going to pick much of them now, Sean, if you wanted to pick, you could say the race was run perfectly for him to produce a big effort, but he still has to go and do it, and he duly did. You know, this year he's kicked Epitant out of the way twice. Look, Epitant isn't a, a superstar these days, but she's still a high-level operator, and he hasn't just beaten her. Look, Stateman has beaten good horses, but Constitution Hill has kicked good horses clean out of the way. So, as more, I do like Stateman, 
But Constitution Hill... Is he best of the rest? Because a lot of people... You could look at the without market and you'd have yeah. Statement, you'd have Vauban, who we don't seem to talk about at all. Yeah, if I like to move it, if you wanted to, to, to pull it out a little bit more, there'll be plenty of people who want to back him each way. Um, without, you know, it'd be a very sneaky bet. But look, he's very hard to pick at. He jumps, he travels, he can make the run and he can sit handy. You know, the only thing that's getting him beat is if he has an off day, I yeah. think. Um, but like, I do like Stateman, but I, I don't think he's quite as good Not as Constitution Hill. Not quite enough, mm. but, but, but the, the preference for you in the without market. Uh, for you, Matt, is, is this one where we just sit back and, and relish it or will you be um, moonwalking about doing... So, like, Constitution like Hill, like after it? just five runs, I, th I said this to the... the um, BHA handicapper today that you feel because there's been so much talk about him that he's been around a long time like we know a lot about him he's only raced five times I mean we actually hardly know anything about him in reality um, although obviously we know he's got this tremendous pace and this beautiful way of jumping hurdles um, but he's got after five races a mark of 173 I, I think time form rated night nurse 182 um, which was about as high as you go um, so he might still have £10 to find to be the greatest hurdler of all time. Um, but it's not impossible after just five runs that he could be that. I think anyone who says he's a certainty um, is being a bit silly just from the point of view. We do not know how good state man can be. Now, it's very unlikely we're going to have two hurdlers who are rated in the mid-170s. But... We do not know how good state members be. So there won't be many normal punters backing Constitution Hill at 4 to 11. The each way is hard. Um, I originally wondered about Sharjo, actually, because he is just the type of horse like a theatre world who slips into the frame in this. But I, I believe connections are vaguely considering running him off a highway in the county hurdle, Sharjo. Well, which, I, I which... put that... We had, we had Rich Ritchie in, the, in this very studio, you might recall. I, 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 I said his Sharjo are the worst... So yeah. each way selection without, and he was very lukewarm about that. Well, I think that's the reason why he's been dropped to a mark of 155 charger, and although he's obviously going to have a big weight in the county, he's got a lot of ability. But that's another story. I mean, at the moment, if you wanted a little tinkle on win, uh, non runner, no bet, Epiton each way at 33, like she does have a chance, I think, of hitting the frame. Is she going to run? Well, we don't know, but it's non, non runner, no bet, isn't it? So you're still getting 33 to one. And if she did run, I think she'd be about 16s or 14s. So you're probably beating the price by double. Well, she's looking, and if she doesn't run, you get your money back, which will probably you know be what one, I mean? one of your better results but of the week, in fairness. having yeah. said that, you're probably only playing for one place. Because I think Constitution Hill and Stateman have to sort of collapse, basically, for not to be first or second. This could be six or seven runners. It's a, That's, that, know, this, this, it could chop off. For our viewers at home, mm. it's, it, we, we, we want to see Constitution Hill, we want to uh, relish how brilliant he is, but we also want to make a few quid if we can. And it seems to me, as you say, this could be a six or seven runner race, but at the moment we're betting as if mm. it's, going to, it's going to be a 50 odds three places, and, you, and the same applies in the without market, which is where I'm always looking at this stage, mm. hoping that we might end up with six runners, and I can pick a horse who only has to finish in the first four of that mm. six or seven, which left me with, I think we're ruling out Charger potentially, it, don't laugh, it left me not oh, so yeah. sleepy. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, this is the reason... Who is an intended run? This is the reason, Sean, you present and you're not an expert <laughs> guest. Right, let's move on. I do have a bit of form yeah. with this particular bet. And it, absolutely and it's, it's does. A nice, it's, it's absolutely a, it's does. A nice, it's a nice yeah. bet because I think there's some value that... Like, it, yeah, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't no, a pensioner when you had form it, with him, Sean. He is 11, that's, that's a very fair point. I, just, I didn't add a... <laughs> Brief word with Kelly Morrison this morning to point out, well, he is 11. But they, they, will, try and, um, they will try and get him there. But to that's one what you're one. looking for. You, you, I think you could go with Epiton. If, if, if you get the same terms, not, it should be 6 or 7 to 1 without the favourite, non runner mm. no bet each way. That's not the worst bet either. You know, on the basis that there's no harm done. I think, I, I think Echoes and Rain would run a stormer in this if they ran her. But I think they're going to run her in the mares. Yeah. That's this, the thing. Everything is heading towards the mares. She, she's not a two and a half miler for me. Mm. Like She's a real fast two miler. She doesn't settle well over two and a half. But because this mares race exists they're trying to shoehorn her into it better like, ground yeah <laughs> yeah now you'd want a bigger field and more pace than she'll probably get in this but i think two miles is they might surprise us it might be a bigger field than we expect but it could yeah. i think you're right we could easily see us the other thing with nikki a place though, i have a feeling there could be two races here there could be constitution hill and state man and then there's the whole of the rest of the field running for a place like trying to get like gordon elliott he was speaking at cheltenham today and he said they were going to probably run zana here mm. and and he said he'll be ridden for a place now 
of course, before anyone goes crazy, he's trying to win, and if Salah here can win, he'll try and win. The, the, the but, job is to obtain your best possible yeah, placing. But you could see almost two races going on here, yeah. like state man tracking a constitution hill about 20 lengths clear of the rest, all thinking we'll run on and try and get third. Is that all Gordon would have in there, Zanahir? It probably is. Isn't yeah, that's it, it yeah. Pi Piper, yeah. possibly? Um, oh, he's gone at the game. <laughs> no, he's not he gone out again. No, he's not gone out again. Okay. But you'd have to imagine that he, maybe in a handicap, he might be worth a chance mm. this year. Okay. We must move on. We must we move must. on. I tell you what, we move on to the champion chase where there's a lot more to talk about in terms oh, yes. of how we think uh, the race might um, pan out. Um, and... Uh, and, of course, who might go on and win uh, the championship chase? Let's have a look at the market. Most firms struggling to split the front two. Betfred favouring an argument, but only by the narrowest margin from Edwardston. The horse that beat the pair of them, of course, at Cheltenham in the rescheduled um, Ascot races, Editor du Gite on 5-1, to 8-1 to one and bigger bar those. Now, I'll, I'll start with you on this one, Matt, because you've, you've said that Edwardston, you think, is a, is a smidgen below being a worldie, um, while still a very good horse. Does that mean you look beyond him here? Does that make you an Energumen fan or even an editor du Gip man? I'm, I'm quite boring in here. I mean, uh, a lot of people out there will know my thoughts on this race. I think Shishkin, and I still think Shishkin will win it because <laughs> with Shishkin, it's about class. It's not about distance. Okay, it's not about about it it doesn't run. If Shishkin was in here, he'd be my lay of the week. Yeah, if Shishkin was here, he'd be my absolute banker like Ryanair. <laughs> like run. in the Ryanair. Matt, he doesn't but run. as he doesn't run, it's probably not worth... Talking about him. No, no it definitely isn't worth talking it's about him. Luckily, we can't test that theory. So, go on, go on. So, I'm with Ed Woodstone. Um, I didn't like Energamine's run last time. Um, I, I counter that with how many times has a Willie Mullins horse, despite being good in Ireland, looked completely different at Cheltenham, like almost like a, a different animal. And maybe, a, well, it might not be a, that big a field, but maybe a slightly bigger field and a stronger gallop up front will help him, although Editor Jajit did go... Quite well, but I, all in all, I think Editor Chiji nicked the race he won the other day. I thought Edward Stone, much as I love the top cat, Tom Cannon, I think he'd like another go at that particular race if he could have one. Yeah, I think he was. And Edward Stone made up an enormous amount of ground and just paid for that close home. Um, I, I just like him as a horse. I, I don't like the way Energamine used to be a sort of crazy front runner. Then he turned up into this hold up horse. Now he didn't finish off a race. He's He's got some holes in him, I think, in Ergamin. Well, he made a bad mistake at the end and an earlier mistake as well, Jamie. Where are you on that race and how it, how it panned I, out? I, yeah, I agree with Matt as in... Say that again. Uh, Edward Stone, <laughs> I'd say if he had a you say that again, I'll time put it on my show again... <laughs> <Give it up>. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say if he had his time again, he probably would be a bit different. But in saying that, I think in Ergamin, I thought Willie done a great thing bringing him over for that race. I do think the white boards made a difference. Oh, oh don't. I am. Give I'm me the evidence it. for that. Huh? Give it, show me the evidence for that. It's it, like people saying the sun a... brought my horse down. Well, show me the evidence. Yeah, for but that. if you if you take it for a two mile championship race um, over fences, you can't miss a beat. You know, I thought he made two errors. That he's only beaten six six and a half lengths. Do you know? And if you're looking for something to f pick a hole in him, that's it. He's got that out of the way. I think he'll go to Champion Chase and I think he'll win it. I think we'll see a different Energamine in Madrid. Do you think if he jumped the last clean, he, he, he'd have won that race that day? No, no, I, no, no he, he wouldn't have won. No way, he wouldn't have won. But I do think that, I, I do believe that he lost. Even a fraction, if you take a quarter of a length, even less than a quarter of a length at every fence, that's... You know, there's your six and a half lengths. We were going to come back to that concept when we talk about the Arkle, I'm uh -huh. sure. Um, where were you on the, on the Clarence House and the race, the Queen Mum as a whole? Well, I love this race and the setup of it, Sean, because some people will say, oh, you know, you don't want these horses to meet until Cheltenham. But I, I actually love it when they all banged heads before and you, can, you see them all in action against each other and the thought turns to, right, what can the beaten ones do differently to get a different result? Like, I thought Edder de Geet was brilliant that day. Like you watch him jump, he's he's exactly what you want in a champion chase horse. Like everything he, right. Now, he's low, he's aggressive, he's fast away. Like I take Matt's point, he had the element of surprise probably in his last two runs. But when you look at the sectional times, it wasn't like he was crawling and sprinted. Like he just got a very well judged ride, went yep. a good even tempo, and, 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 and kept rocking. When Edwardson got to yes, it. but for me, Edward Stone probably should have won that race by two lengths. 
Um, you can see exactly what happened. I don't want to knock um, Tom, Tom Cannon too much. You can see what he was doing. He, was, he thought an ergamine was his main danger. He was following him. He was riding a horse that was essentially having his first run in two months, having fallen um, a month earlier. He's a horse that gets a bit fresh, that thrives on racing. He was probably just a bit strong with Tom, and he rode him a bit quieter. He was, like, he was jumping aggressively, which isn't really him. Like To me, it just showed how fresh he was. And what he did when Tom realised, oh no, an ergamine wasn't carrying him in, right. what, he, the, what that horse did from before two out to halfway up the run in was some effort. Yeah, it was. He ran massive. Mm. And it just the petrol gauge just ran low on him late on, and he got beat by a very good horse. For me, he was value for two lengths. He was two lengths the best horse that day. Loves Cheltenham as well. Is he, mm. How many times have you been to Cheltenham, Kevin? Oh, God, I'd say pff, three or four. Five. And he's won three of them. Mm. Um, and he's got a good record around there. However, do we all agree that we would consider Gary Moore to be one of the cleverest and sh sort of shrewdest, canniest trainers out there with, with Andy Yeah. Mm. So this horse has been 28 to 1 and 14 to 1 the last two times. Like, the stable haven't believed that this horse can do what it's doing. No, he and said that himself, Gary, that he surprised <laughs> him. The horse has continued to surprise it's, him. It suggests to me that the reason he's doing it is because others are disappointing rather than Editor Sheet has suddenly become an amazing horse. I don't know. That's I what it suggests I to me. I think it's very, it's, it's very hard to throw a stone at the, the Clarence House for him, I think. He's done everything you right know? in that race. Yeah. I, think. I still think that if we look at those horses, who's the best of those horses? Like my hunch is in Urquhart is still the best of those horses. How are they going to ride him? Now, because there's a, there's a school of thought there that they won't try to ride him quietly again. They did it in the Champion Chase because there was all sorts of tactical chicanery there and they changed things up and it worked fine because the race went to bits. Yes. But they yeah. repeated it. And I don't even know if Cheltenham's his track boy. See, like he jumps yep. out to his right and he was doing a bit of it again that day. How do you ride him? Like, it didn't work last time. Do you go more forward? You look at the setup of this race, like, there's a bunch of fast horses in here. Like, I don't think he'll get the lead even if he wants it. No, no, it, it might be a toughly contested lead. Mm. How, how would you ride him? I'd just pop him out. Yeah. yeah, sit wherever he's happy there, handy away, and ride a race after that. Do you think he'd the horse off the bridle, though? Do you think if he's under any pressure, he would find or battle? I well, he, like... Yeah, it's, it's, a fair, it's a fair it's a fair yeah. point to say like when he came down to a battle with Shishkin last year in in Ascot, did he battle? You could you yeah, could he was you could the say, best two mile chaser in Europe right now. That's not in this race. No, that's <laughs> not in this race. Um, that was a tough old Nicky. race. Nicky, right, you're going in argument. Yeah, I'm going in argument. You're going. I'm Edward Stone. Edward Stone. Yeah. And I've I've always thought Blakey is a class lad. I'm going Edward Stone. <laughs> okay, good news for you, Gary. Uh, we haven't he, tipped he, 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 so he is he is very dull, but we think he'll win the champion chase. Yeah. Well, that's why you picked him. <laughs> <laughs> you pick Alan like King himself. will be delighted. A late convert. The most welcome type of all, Matt, so they'll be delighted with that. Uh, stay as hurdle. I want you to kick us Ooh. off, um, um, Kevin, because home by the Lee, we, we going stairs, and then you must like your chances, Joseph Source. Yeah, he's a tricky one to work out, this horse. He, he, he was a bit of enigma, an enigma for a long time, and he looked different last time. Like, it was the first time in a long time that he, he travelled. Like, he's a horse that can not travel in his races, you know, lose interest, get outpaced, and come home well. You know, which is, there's a view that he might be a little bit kind of claustrophobic, that he doesn't want to be in tight company. And that's what happened in the race last year. He wasn't beaten all that far. But I know Joseph changed a couple of things with him this year, this season. And it was from the outset of the season that he was being trained as a staying hurdler. Whereas last year it was kind of an afterthought after fences went wrong. And he looked better last time. And if he does the same thing again, if he can jump handy and travel, he'll have a super chance. But uh, being, uh, I can't help but be a small bit pessimistic about him just because I know the stairs hurdle will be a very different race to what was quite a steadily run affair at Leopardstown. I just... Uh, you're, that, you're sounding like he did a bit of an editor du jour to you and he surprised you at Leopardstown. Well, he did. That's, and that's, and the and and that's he's, arguably the best form around. Yeah, and he surprised JJ as well because you watch the race and I think, you know, coming out of the back, JJ, knowing the horse so well, he, he's given him a, a G up thinking, right, I'm going to need to stay in touch here. And all of a sudden, he's kind of gone forward on him and he's ended up probably in front earlier than he wanted to be. Okay. So look, if he does it again, he'll have a super chance. But me and the way I look at form, I, I like to see them do it twice. When it's a big removal from what you're used to seeing from him, you'd love to see it twice. So I'd be absolutely thrilled if he went and won, obviously. But I, I won't be picking him today. Have you got another pick in the race? I, I'm struggling with this a little bit, Sean. I've come around to Tiapu. 
Okay. And I'll, I'll be interested to hear Jamie's thoughts because my, my, my main concern with him was the ground. And the, the more I look and think about it, I'm, I'm less concerned about him. I, I was in Gardens on Monday and I saw him and I, 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 my first time to have a real good look at him. Like, And he's a, he's a handy type of horse, isn't he? And he, he might just get away with it. And he, like I, I, he was my tip in the champion hurdle last year. And he just got a bit lost and fast, and, and you know it was it was too much of a speed test, and he looked really at home over the longer trip, albeit a steadily run race that didn't really deeply examine stamina, but he seems to have the right character to be a stayer, racing character, and in like a wide open year, like he's a 160 plus horse, mm. uh, and that might be enough, you know. Well, let's hear from the man himself, um, Jamie. What what do we think of Gordon's uh, Tiapu? Yeah, Tiapu is. Um I, I wouldn't. I'd forget about last year. I don't think it was ground last year. I think it was just he, he, there was a few gardens probably didn't perform last year, and I think I put more down to that than the ground. Okay. Um, I'd say this horse this year has been campaigned well. I thought the Hatton's Grace went super. He got a super ride, mm. and obviously then into the Gorn race, I thought Davy just you know nursed them in over three mile. Um, if he handles the ground, that's your only worry. Yeah. You know, he does handle soft ground very, very well. And on the back of that, that's your only worry. Yeah. But he's a very, very talented horse. And his form all stacks up, you know. And um, I'm not worried about the trip. Just the ground. That will be my only... I, I thought Gordon made a very interesting comment about him there earlier in the week. He said Davy got off him and said he, he was delighted he got to sit in him because it, the horse kind of fooled him a little bit. He's quite behind the bridle, and he, he gave him a bit of a G up, and all of a sudden he was in front, like yeah. way earlier than he wanted to be. And Davy felt himself that he, he would benefit a lot so from having experienced that, and he'll know a bit more what to expect at Cheltenham from the horse. So I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah, well, like it's two and a half, Hatton's Grace. You know, you step up to three mile now at Cheltenham. Mm. Um, I think you can ride him that way. Mm. You know, it's a long run in. Probably be a big enough field as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But it is wide open now. Mm. Yeah, I love I love Flooring Porter as well. Mm. Yeah, I d he's only an eight-year-old. Gavin's horses are in good form. You a lot know. better form than they probably uh, have been the last two massive, years coming in the draft. Massive. Yeah. Um, Talking about Davy having to get to know Tia Poo, what, what about this horse? Because it sounds like you need to almost do do something different with him every time. He's a bit of a... I just... No, I think... Very great shot there. Look at him hanging yeah, like a gate. Like, <laughs> he, he's obviously quirky, but he's a very talented quirky yeah. horse. Mm. But, like, I, I have a funny feeling Danny... Danny around Cheltenham on this horse, you know, he's given him two fantastic rides. As I said, he's still a young horse. He's not he's not over the hill by any manner or means. So um, he's beaten, what, four lengths in Leperstown. And if you watch at the back of the winning post, out past the line, he's gone again on Danny. Mm. Um, and that's the quirkiness of the horse. I think, I'd say if Danny probably would have went a fraction faster in mm. Leperstown, if... Yeah, if 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 it was run different, but it's the right man for the job. I think it is a bit of a job, uh, flooring Ford, but he's brilliant on his day, Matt. What do you? What do you? What he's do you my selection. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's the dual winner, okay. and his historically. Please don't do that again. Um, historically, uh, this is a race where if you run well in it once, you tend to run well in it again and again and again and again because effectively there are very few horses of this caliber that stay three miles really strongly. Um, he beat Time Hill last year. If Time Hill was in this, I'd fancy him to win it. Um, so uh, I did have a quick word with Danny Mullins today because the terrible thing about these shows is you come on them and the next day the horse is he's out of Cheltenham because we know he's, he's been in a bit of a race against Time. Um, but Danny said Gavin's really happy with him at the moment. He didn't mention anything about, you know, it could be difficult, we won't get there. And I think there were slight questions about the ride last time, like where he was on the track. Did he go fast enough? Um, but he certainly showed enough to suggest the engine's still there. So, and, and look, some horses come alive at Cheltenham for whatever reason, and this is definitely one of them. And I think he's massive. Again, he's, a, he's massively overpriced for one, yeah. maybe two lacklustre runs. Yeah. And you can, you can hold fire, his price isn't moving, and also most firms are non-runner, no bet. Do you want a funky one? Go on, yeah, yeah, non, absolutely. Non-runner, no bet yeah. now, because yeah, I yeah. believe it's, he needs to kind of hit every mark okay. between now and then. As Tyrion for launch, it's like 40 to 1. And it's, his, it's been his only entry for Cheltenham all along. We last saw him since last the, year, go, the Gold Cup. Yeah. yeah, like he's a fiercely talented horse that just has serious issues with jumping fences, <laughs> um, to say the least. 
but he's very talented and it wouldn't be the maddest 40 to one shot if, if he gets there like I say I think they're kind of racing against time and he needs to even if he gets in he might be slightly forgotten about in, yeah. in all of the, uh, he's, he's uh, the talk fiercely, the fiercely talented horse and hurdles might just uh, might suit him a little you, bit you, you look a little bit uh, sceptical about that Dave. We, 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 we've <laughs> got to move on the one horse we haven't mentioned who might yet turn up in this race is Marie's Rock who might yeah. well be supplemented please. that'd be a surprise switch wouldn't it not really, no. Connections have been hinting at it for yeah, some time. Yeah, and yeah. She did stay on really well. I, th I think it, he was even probably sleeping that day after the workout sure. yesterday, Nicky, because I think the, the likelihood of Epiton going into the mares is looking more and more likely, in which case, why have two in the mares? She could come here. Will she stay? God, she's, a, she's been like a strong free goer over the years. Like, yeah, she should be a tough definitely. ride over three miles, I think. I think they think she'll improve over three months. I quite, I, I quite like her for this if they go that route. Sounds Let's like talk it. about the blue ribbon, the gold ribbon, the gold ribbon, the gold cup on Friday, and we've got a dominant favourite here, Galapin des Champs, six to four with Betfred there, Aplutard on six, Noble Yates, seven, Statler, and Brave Man's Game is in now to seven. Um, Shishkin almost certainly won't run here. Uh, Ryanair is almost certainly his target. Conflated almost certainly will run here. Jamie, is that right for Gordon? Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, he's been he's been mapped out for the Gold Cup this year. Um, nice running down Royal uh, to get get, get him going. Um, I thought he was very impressive at Christmas. Uh, step up and trip, Gold Cup trip, fresh, well, Miss Dublin Racing Festival. I think this is a tip in itself because many people say, well, the Ryanair looks. I know Shishkin is now in the Ryanair, but they, he, Gordon was saying this even before Shishkin had won the other day. I think wasn't mm. he that he was leaning Gold Cup? Yeah, but I think you have to give this horse a chance at it. He, he's been so impressive at Leperstown the last two years. Give him a chance at this. If he if he bombs out, look at that's the way. But his pedigree would suggest he will stay. Yeah, he's a better horse again this year. He's absolutely gleaming at home. Um, I think I think this this horse could run a hell of a race and, and the Gold Music Cup. to my ears because <laughs> he's my Gold Cup selection at at this stage with the prices we're at now. But wh where are you on this, Kevin? And where are you on Gallopin de Champ? Because he, he he's the sort of pivot around the whole market. Yeah, well, this is it. He's very short, but and look, I started this season thinking right. I nearly hope he bolts up in each one of his starts before Cheltenham and I'll take him on at Cheltenham just because of that. The thought being that that extreme stamina test just might not be for him. But to be honest. A lot of the, the, the fears that I had for him were allayed last time. You know, I think they've done a good job. They, they've been riding him a little bit differently this season. He's been less exuberant. He's been a bit more efficient in his jumping. And Do you think? I, I think so, yeah. I thought, he, I thought he was wild enough early on now. I thought he was high, he's, he's high little, enough. He's always a little bit big early. Yeah, but like what, you put in, that in a, in a cluster now, early doors in a Gold Cup over the first two fences. Yeah. I just worry a little bit early doors. I'm absolutely in that camp. And I, I, yeah. I went back over his yeah. two rounds this year. I thought, he, he jumps yeah. high over the first two, yeah, loses does, a bit yeah. of ground, get yeah. a little bit back. That's my but only worry. But his engine is so big that he, yeah. he's instantly recovering in these races. Well, just, it was just the way... Yeah. Will he, he have the space to recover? Will, well, he, will is, people yeah, take his ground? Field, you know, different track. But the, it was the way he powered up the run in now and jeez he couldn't pull him up trip no problem we're not worried <laughs> yeah, about I think, that yeah I think the trip's fine it's, it's the first half of the race is where it could go wrong 100%. you know if he, if he does get a little bit big early bit shuffle back bit lit up you know if you're taking him on that's what you're banking on yeah. but like I think because I was of your I was of your same thought but, but I've come back around and I, I, I think he is a bit of a superstar he could and be could he? he could be I th just I too think good he is. I think uh, he, has, he has a bit of X factor about yeah. him and in the past I've I've I haven't been willing to come around in my thinking and I've probably paid for it. And I just all my gut after the last run just said to me, look, just don't take this This is long. the day that you want to be right about him, right? Mm. <laughs> the thing I liked what Paul did the last day, he went down the inside. Mm. He gave him a ballsy ride, yeah. you know what I mean? He didn't keep him out, he didn't give him that space. And I think he'll do that in the Gold Cup. I think he'll give him a chance. I think yeah. he'll take a chance down the inner and, and, and ride him for that. If he, and if he is a superstar... Then he'll win. Mm. Good luck to him if he's. Yeah. I can let him run well, and, and he's, see he's how he is at four, six to four. You know, exactly. Yeah. Short, so yeah. I, I'm with conflated. You're with conflated. Have, have you got a bet? Uh, or are you you're saying I, six I to like, four is I fair? I like Statler. I think Statler okay. will close the gap on Gallop and the Champ. He's a real Gold Cup horse. He was my tip for the Gold Cup at the start of the season. I still think he'll run well. I wouldn't be at all 
against you were conflated. You might remember this this seat last year tipped up conflated with a gold cup. He ended up going for the Ryanair. Mm, I like so. That as well. Like I, I don't think it's a, it's a solo run for Galloping by any means. I quite like a few against them, but I just think he has that X factor and he's yep. probably going to win. What about you, mate? You with his favourite or? Um, yeah, I think Galloping Deschamps is going to win the Gold Cup. What I loved about his last run was he was only getting going at three miles, and there's the big question about him was would he stay? Well, I think he he, he could improve bundles for the trip. I don't care how he's ridden, uh, I think he's fairly bomb-proof. Um, I did speak to Michael O'Leary yesterday about Conflate, and I did say to him, do you think he can win the Gold Cup? And his answer was no. Um, uh, <laughs> but I think he'll run well, but I don't think he really believes he's a sort of war of attrition or a Don Cossack in reality. The horse that I think, uh, look, I, I, I'm going to back two. I'm going to back Gallop and Deschamps, um, and I'm also going to back Minella Indo each way. I cannot for the life of me understand why, having beaten Statler last time, now Statler was giving eight pounds, but he beat him last time, and he's 20 to one, Minella Indo, and he's won the race, and he's finished third in the race. Yes, he's 10, but that's not ancient for a jump source. For the life of me, I can't understand why he's such a big price. Yeah. So I'm definitely having a little bit each way okay. on him. So Manello under a nice big price, but uh, you always gallop into shot two for conflated and Statler as an alternative. It's, it's a good race, though. It's a, right yeah. good it's race. a good race. Yeah. And it's a gold cup, be... Cody. Of course yeah, it's a good I know race. that, but it's, it's very competitive. And I think the early part of the race will be very, very interesting. Mm. Do you know, you put Hewick, a high senior... Um, you know, Brave Man's game, where's he going to lay? Noble Yates, where, you know, he'll probably drop in a bit, but I, I think the, 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 the tactically, yeah, yeah, tactically, tactically. Minnell Endo had be handy. Yeah. Boyce is so looking at it. Ha- Boyce is dying to move on. Look, he's a looking at it. We haven't mentioned the One of the most impressive Gold Cup winners top. in the modern era. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. haven't even mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone a bit sort of. I couldn't have a year The vibes don't seem that great. Although Henry de Bromhead has said today that, you know, things are looking better, but I don't know. Don't you have to come into these races in great form? That's what they all say, isn't it? What great price race. is Aplutard? I can't remember it's what eight, price. Eights or tens? Eights? I think if, if the vibes start to get better, come my, he's going to be an awful lot Just short. lastly, because I, I, I Dom, our producer, is going crazy. Um, but my... <laughs> he's crazy, to be fair. Um, my feeling is there's too many in here who are really strong stairs for Aplutard to win it again, because I'm still not convinced he's a really <laughs> strong stair. <laughs> they won't let it go. <laughs> what? You won't let that go. Prove that last year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Well, we move on, Boise. Yeah, we better have. Get something we? more uh, Just a reminder. Um, now, uh, I mentioned at the top that you're very welcome to get in touch. A uh, bit of love to our Twitter followers, by the way. We put out a tweet earlier giving us your, your naps in order to get a free bet and some really imaginative naps, which I was pleased to see, not just the shorties that I've gone for for my nap later on. Uh, so do get in touch. And if you're watching on Facebook mm-hmm. or on uh, YouTube, all you need to do is just put in the text chat there, just win. Just put win, and that means you're in. You're in a free draw to get a free bet, and that will um, uh, put you in the hat uh, for a bet, Fred, free bet. How much is it? £50. £50. I think there's more than one of them. And you could win a £50 free bet from Bet Fred uh, just by just tapping in win into the comments there if you're on um, Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, Boise, right. just before you move on, um, I, I don't mean to interrupt, I've but missed this. when what? Kevin Blake <laughs> says things, I need to check them because so often he puts oh, the punters away. <laughs> so I have just asked Willie Mullins whether a steer in Falange is likely to run and his response was unlikely. It's Willie Mullins. He'll probably be likely tomorrow, unlikely <laughs> three days later. And then, you know, who knows? Okay. Who knows whether piece of... <laughs> and anyway, we can wait and see. Sorry, Kevin. Willie. He, uh, Kevin Blake says it's just you and your line. Non-runner, no bet, and it doesn't matter anyway. Exactly. Let's move on to the supreme <laughs> novices hurdle. Um, Fasal Vega, who was a very short price for this before... Uh, one of the few shocks that weekend, wasn't it, Fasal Vega? Uh, 72, Marine Nacional, Ampere, a pass. 72, Il était Tomp. Four to one, five to one, Gaelic warrior. Then we get to a British horse, Lucia, six to one. There, te- eight to one, Hunter's Yard. Tamuras for Paul Nichols on uh, ten to one as well. Um, where should we start with the? Actually, um, high definition is in there as well, isn't it? Um, oh, the old giraffe. I want your high definition. Who failed to complete, of course, uh, last time out, Kevin. But still an entire Galileo horse. Yeah, this yeah. is an interest. Yeah. Is he yeah. going to come over? What yeah, do you sure. think? You know, he was group one form on the flat. Uh, I think the, the intention is to run. Um, you obviously don't want to come in off the back of what happened last time unseated. It was a funny one, actually. He kind of he, he overjumped and, and, and stepped on himself. 
and just obviously got unbalanced and, and right. off JJ came. But look, you, you wouldn't like to underestimate him. Could you be confident? Of course you couldn't. But he'd be, he'd be a dangerous one to be forgetting about now because we, we know how talented he is. And like, I think he's, 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 he has an appetite for jumping. You know, and I know people will probably laugh at that because he jumped out to the right first time and unseated last time. But <laughs> it wouldn't be a shock to me now if he puts together a, a, a very good round. You know, because I think he's well capable. He just be very exciting if he does. Yeah, and like I don't think making the running was was ideal for him first time. Okay. You know, he, you know, think of where he's come from. You know, he was in Ballydoyle all his life, and he only would have seen a hurdle for the first time but six weeks before his hurling debut, and then he had to go make the running. And he did it, he jumped out to his right and he still put up a real good performance on the clock, you know. So he's well capable, I wouldn't like to forget about him. Joseph needs to sneak in and school a few of these three-year-old colts over hurdles. <laughs> the old man's <laughs> it wasn't for a lot of don't worry about that. But um, yeah, look, again, you, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't put him up, but it's not going to be a complete shock if he goes very well. Really it? exciting. But, uh, while, uh, while we're on you though, Kevin, uh, Fasal Vega, because you, you, you're yeah, still in the Fasal yeah, Vega I'm with camp. him, I'm with him. Um, loved his first couple of runs. Look, he was the best bumper horse, obviously, and yep. um, his first two runs over hurdles, I really liked them. I, I loved his technique, you know, lovely fluent technique, clever. You know, you could, you could pick out a couple of occasions where he was wrong and he, he was on a wrong stride and he managed to flick himself out of trouble without losing any ground. Um, and last time, you know, you can point it to a couple of things. You can say he went a little bit too quick. He, he did go a little bit too quick, but not really too quick. Um, I, Hold on, did he go too quick or not? He went, he went a little bit faster than ideal. But he went too quick. Where, where, where were you by, on that day? There was, a, there was an awful lot of talk mm. about that. And, of course, Willie Mullins was uncharacteristically pretty blunt in his appraisal. He thought he was going way too fast. I, w I, I don't think he... I, I know what Kevin is trying to say. I think he was doing too much mm. in Paul's hands. That, that's what he was doing. Paul was wanting to go slower. Much, not just about the pace. Exactly. Okay. He was just doing too much. Paul wasn't in control of what he was trying to do for the first mile. Mm. And that's what I felt was the... Um, you know... In order to have run better in that race, I think Paul would have had to make the decision going down past the stands to actually nearly stand up in the irons and get him back yeah. and let JJ go on maybe. But that didn't happen and the two of them went loggerheads until the second hurdle down the back until JJ went. So I just felt that he'd done too much uh, in his hands. Yeah, it, to me, as much as, the, as much as that's the case, to me the, mo the more relevant piece of information is that he was lame afterwards. Yeah. And he, he was lame for a few days. Like, to me, that makes more sense. Like, for all that he did do a bit much and he did go a little bit too fast, I don't think that accounts for the performance. I think he he'd, he'd an issue with a foot, I believe. I think that accounts. And he has plenty of time. Two, two, two reasons, stroke excuses then, potentially. Um, yeah, and look, he's the, I think he's the best horse in the race, Sean. The, on the evidence, he's the best horse in the race. And now, because of that... You know, you're getting a right old price compared to what you yeah. would have been getting if. Well, that that is true. This horse could have gone off four to five if he won the other day, Matt, mm. and, and and instead he's going to be seven to two or three to yeah, four. He's currently, one. not even clear favourite. He's a joint favourite with Marina. I think he's an absolute good thing. I put him down as an absolute banker. I think there may be the physical issues. I don't know about those, but there may be the physical issues. But I think they're going to kick themselves a little bit this week, this with this horse, because I think. Willie Mullins and Paul Townend are jointly responsible, actually, really, for the craziness of the horse last time. I, I do think they went too fast. And um, when he was in the champion bumper, he was held up towards the rear of midfield. When he won the grade one at Punchestown, he was held up in midfield. And basically, just because he's so much better than all the rest, I think they just thought, look, look just let him roll along because we know we're going to win. But then, of course, he changed into a slightly different horse, quite a free horse on the front end, and he won his first two, and then he just over-raced with the giraffe last time. So um, uh, I absolutely believe they'll drop him right out the back in this, and I think he'll come there. I predict, and you can play this back after, it'll be one of the greatest playbacks this show's ever had. Mm. I predict he will come there like unsinkable boxer. On the snaff. Yeah, I was going long odds on, on the snap was going to get a mention yeah, there. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed you <laughs> yeah, Well, I didn't, because I'm not predictable like you, Blakey. <laughs> I threw it in there. So, okay. Unsinkable boxer strong, would have been a strong price to get a mention. Are, are, are you going to be with... Um, I haven't started yet. Fasal Vega, have you got um, another fancy in here? No, I, I like Hunter's Yarn. Do you? Yeah, I really like well. Hunter's Yarn. Um, I think he's improving. I thought it was a good performance in Navin the last day. 14 to 1, a little bit of uncertainty about the favourite. Lame last day, as Kevin said. Yep. 
Um, I, I like I like Hunter's yarn at, at a bit of each way money for These prices will change quite a bit as well because we don't think Gaelic Warriors going, Lucia's not going for this, and they're both at eight to one at the moment. Mm. So the prices will contract. Yeah. Seven to two, Facil Vega is just a gift from it could be it could be Hunter's yarn at a nice price is another alternative as well. I'd give Tamuris a bit of a chance oh. for what it's uh, worth. Oh, he's, he's, he's trained in England. He's not trained. <laughs> he's, he's done all right in the race in, the, in previous uh, years. We must move on. Uh, the Ballymore is our next port of call. Hermes Allen. And uh, talking of Paul Nichols, has a strong, strong chance here in his, uh, I think, the shortest of all of uh, Paul Nichols' runners this week. Five to two, Ampere pass. Uh, we, we're going to get some crossover in terms of horses mentioned here. I, I'm going to come to you, Jamie, about a horse who's not in here because I've backed him. Ooh. And that's American Mike. Will this be his target? Is he going to travel over? I think Gordon said that he was going to run in this, did he? No. Yeah, he, he think he's leaning towards it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think he's going but to run. But he can't run in the handicaps because he no. hasn't, unless, he, unless he's yeah. going to run between now and Cheltenham. Which he won't. Run. Yeah. yeah I, does he, it matter if he does run? Um, I don't He'd know. Need to run in a, I, I suppose you have to... Handicaps. I don't know. You have to nearly forgive him for the last day. Um, two mile back after a bit of a break and... Uh, yeah, look at... He, he's, worth, he, he's still a very high-class horse, but it's just... Where does he go now, like, you know? Where this kind of trip might suit him? Yeah, 2-5 will suit. Um, yeah, I can see him running here and running a race, but it is very competitive. You know, you, Hermes Allen looks really, really good. Um, and I like a horse of Barry Connells here called Goodland. Mm. I really like this horse. I like his profile. Um, yeah, I thought he was very good in Leperstown, raced up with the pace a little bit on it. Um, with a good engine and um, yeah, I like I, I just like his profile. Okay. What about absolute notions that finished up his tail? I thought he yeah. ran a lovely race. He did, he did. Um, perhaps he might go for the Albert Bartlett. We're not. I, I don't think Gordon has made up his mind yet. Yeah, he, on Monday he seemed to be leaning towards Ballymore. Yeah, but um, could change. Yeah, could change. Um, well, Mike is the one you want to be on of the of the gold. <laughs> yeah. If you like Fasal Vega, you've got to like yeah. American Mike. Isn't he? Um, what do you like in here, Kevin? Um, I like Gaelic Warrior. Um, even with the concerns, which are obvious, that he, he loves jumping right. Um, but the thing about him is, is you, like for me, he's the form horse in the race. You know, Hermes Allen has looked great, but you would worry about, you would question what he's been beating and, and the value of the form. I would, anyway. Um, and you can say the same about a couple of these, but what he did in a competitive handicap last time off a, off a big old rating, I thought was really impressive. And, and he won it. He won off one four three, and to me, he, he won it apologising, like he won really easy. And the jumping right only became a notable thing when he got to the front. And if you watch him back closely through the race, when he had something on his outside, he was actually fine. And I think the Mullins team will be good and thorough. I think that they'll probably have more than a couple in this race. They might employ a, a bit of a bouncer to, to sit up outside him as best they can for as, as, long, for as long as they yeah. can. Because I'd say it could still be a bit hairy when he gets to the front, but I think the step up and trip will really suit. Might uh, end up coming up the, the, the stands rail. Right? Quite easy. <laughs> as long as he's in front, I don't mind. But yeah. I, I think he's a very talented horse, Sean. I think he's got the best form in the race. Yeah. Um, normally, when, when one of Willie's has the best form in the race, they're, they're clear fav and he's not. Yeah. Um, I, I quite like him now. What are you with here, Matt? I'm, I'm, I'm exactly the same. I think he's um, he should have won the Boodles. Uh, he, you know, he was the best horse in the Boodles. The best horse doesn't always win. We know that. Um, he was only rated 129 then, which would technically give him 20 pounds to find with what Hermes Allen's rated. But the fact that Hermes Allen's only rated 149, he's clearly a better horse than that though, because he's won so easily. Um, but the fact that he's still below 150 means that this is winnable. You know, it's not like Hermes Allen has a rating that's stratospheric or anything. Um, I just think this is a really good horse. And, and I know, I think, perhaps just for effect, which is something you lads like to do, but I felt you were slightly <laughs> exaggerating. He's not, he's not my bike Gaelic warrior, I don't think. He's, he's, he's a bit out to the right, but he's not a crazy horse. Oh, he can. When, he, when he's bad, he's very bad. But, <laughs> but, but, but much of the way... From a man who thinks high definition's, like, consistent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think okay. the horse, the form you're forgetting is the Lawlers as well in Nace. Yep. Mm. Throws up the winners of this race two or three times, you know. Um, so, I, like, you have to give Chomp Kiley a, 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 a chance anyway, mm. do you know? OK. Then you, you look at the form lines and... 
And if you give Marine National, he's four <laughs> lengths behind him in a, yeah. in a Royal Bond. We didn't mention him in the Supreme. He, he's, he has a chance. Yeah, he did, a lot went wrong for him mm. in the Royal Bond and he still yeah. managed to win. No, it's... Oh. It's, um, um, it's a good race, this. So, well, we've mentioned several, which shows you the depth in the, in the Ballymore. Is there as much depth in the Albert Bartlett? There usually is loads of chances in the Albert Bartlett. Uh, last few years, some of the more lightly raced, sort of classy towards the front of the horse, front of the market horses have been winning. I love a horse at a big price in this race, which is why I've gone for a 100 to 1. Oh, lovely. With, with loads well, of experience? Well, you I, doubled it with not so sleepy. You, you've got <laughs> I, it. I know, I know the profile. Bags, for me. <laughs> Don't be scared of a price in this race. Look for a horse who's been around the block a lot mm. and has raced a lot and has a lot of experience. And it's, it's, it's not always a winning formula. You go a long time between drinks, but they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're nice prices when you do connect. I'll unveil mine in a moment. Who's, who's, who's got a fancy in this? Who wants to start? Kevin, you're... Uh, Joe, Matt, yeah. come on. You I really like Fabry de Champdeau. Any horse called Chapo uh, has, must, have, <laughs> must be pretty, pretty good and he is a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Um, but he stays really strong... Um, I mean, Connie can tell us more because he lives with him on a daily basis, but he's done very little wrong and I think he's got a great each-way chance. Favori de Champ du, what do we make of him, James? Yeah, yeah he's a saddler maker horse. He's, he's very consistent. He's, I think since he's been stepped up and trip, he's been, um, he's been very good. Uh, yeah, he definitely has a chance. Thanks, buddy. He, he suits the profile for it. Um, Jiggins Towner could be well pre represented here with Cool Survivor and maybe... Search for Glory. Mm. And I, I really like to search for Glory, I think. Do you? Yeah, mm. stepped up and Well, that would be a big price. Better ground. Yeah. Um, I think he's got a great chance of being in the each-way money. Search for Glory. Mm. And... Mm. He's a little bit unknown. Like, he, he finished up uh, the tail end of um, Hidden Valley Lake yeah. and Monty's Star in Clamel the last day. And he just... He's an improving horse. He's sire, fame and glory. Uh, home by the Lee. Fame and yep. glory, I think, when they step up and Sadly trip. Missed, yeah. yeah. Um, I, 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 I like this horse now. He's, he's a nice, simple horse. And if he well, stepped I like up it. Now, I'd yeah. like him better if he'd run more. But he has, he's a point winner, isn't he? Which he's a point winner, that, that, yeah. That, that wouldn't, that wouldn't put me serious, off. He's yeah. a good jumper. <laughs> if, he'd, um, if he'd run more, he wouldn't be running in this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one thing I'd say is that I'd normally be with you, Sean. But I think when you get a, a sort of a good ground Albert Bartlett, yeah. That profile is less. We've seen that. It. We've seen that in the last few years. Yeah, on, on when, it, surface, when the it's a real slog, come, yeah. the, 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 the experienced ones yeah. can come to the fore. I like the same form line, different horse, and prepared to forgive Hidden Valley Lake. Really liked him at Cork, beaten last time, but I think it's very forgivable. Had to make his own running, didn't like it. Ground softer than ideal. Um, it was just a mess of a race for him, uh, and I th and he was you know he was still giving weight away to the eventual winner, who's not a bad horse at all, I'd say. But I'd say getting back on a sounder surface, getting a lead at Cheltenham will, will both help will both help him. And based on what he did, the cool survivor horse I like at Cork the time before, I'd stick with him. Okay. But it's a wide open race, isn't it? It is a wide open race. As I, I said. Never be scared of a price in this race. We've mm. had some short prices recently, but 33 to 1 shots, 50 to 1 shots, 40 to 1 shots win this race. I'm going for a 100 to 1 shot, and that horse, I have, I'm still scrolling down my screen to get to him, he's so far down, is uh, Sam Palais, who's trained by Richard Bandy, who has been chasing, and chasing really well, actually, mm. uh, and, and has done very well over fences. Um, his most recent hurdle star ended with a fall, unfortunately, very late on. But he was running a huge race. Travel he's not a big horse. He's a small little pocket rocket, but he travels brilliantly. He'd be rated 140, the high 140s, I think, uh, over, over uh, mid, mid to high 140s over fences. Um, he's One, a, he's 53, no less. Is that what he is? I believe so. Well, might, might, might be... Uh, well... That might be... Uh, yeah, because he's, he's been winning over oh. fences. So he might, 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 might well be his fence mark. Um, spoke to Richard Bandy this morning. All well. Oh. All systems go. 100 to 1. Uh, what I like about him is the, is the experience. And you're right. that you know, Some of these experienced horses might get outclassed. I love a second season herder in this race. He's not quite that because he's been chasing. But he's been herding, then chasing, switching back to hurdles because he's still a novice. And this was the target. Makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, try and on quickly, man. <laughs> fell asleep about 10 minutes ago, to be honest. For the bandy man. <laughs> you'll, be, uh, you'll, uh, you'll be wide awake if he comes <laughs> swinging around that corner, still in the mixer. Uh, which is what tends to happen in that race. There'll be about 10 of them. Meleeing their way around that. You're final still thing. going on, Boise. <laughs> Triumph hurdle. Lossy mouth heads the mark. Are we keeping faith? Yes. With Lossy mouth. Yes, says Matt. You've got the scarf. I'm not going to say much. I just think she's miles the best horse in this. Clearly, she'd hit her one last time. Um, she jumps for fun. She stays strongly. 
I just think she wins. I'd be quite happy to, to if you want bankers and you're having, I mean, remember in, in the exact science of the betting world, the bigger the price, the more you should be having on rather than less. So, you know, you should be lumping on your 200 to one shots, not your six to four shots. But... Well, if you think she should be four to six, then you can lump on a six to four. Uh, no, it's relative to what you, you think yeah. she should be. Yeah. Yes, but, but most punters will have less on on a bigger price. Of course, yeah. And, of course, it should really generally be the reverse. But, anyway, that's another story. It's not a punting show uh, from the point of view of teaching. Um, and um, you'd be excellent at that, though, Boise, if we ever do that. Uh, but, um, yeah, I just think she's... She's the best horse. Much the best. Much was the it best. a bit of a fluke her getting beat? I'm not sure it was a fluke her getting beat last time. I think Garla and Marceau will beat her again. Yeah. Well, I certainly, I'd, I'd have them. I can't split them. Yeah. I, I think, That's you know, just, obvi obviously, yeah. look, it was, you had to focus on Lassie Mout. Because, you know, she was, she did get so much trouble. And she clearly was better than the result. But go and watch it back and focus on Garla and Marceau. Like, she's won well for me. She's got to the front too soon. And she was always in control. Lassie Mout was never getting her. Oh. And in a race, I almost said in a race like the Triumph, it, it'll probably, but the new Triumph is a little bit different. You, you'd love a big field because she is like notably free. And um, and Danny, I'd say, learned from his first spin on her where he ended up kind of breaking cover on her quite early and probably got there a bit soon. I'd say he'd love to wait and wait and put her put her asleep and explode late on. Yeah. Um, and Lassie Mout, I just don't love her jumping. You know, she's a bit up in the air. We saw what happened to her. You know, I know a horse kind of stopped in front of her, but I could see her getting shuffled back in, in the triumph now. She's just not terribly slick to yeah. me. I had a chat with Jacob Pritchard-Webb, our resident French expert often here in the studio. He said there's really nothing between them on their French four, uh, those two. He wasn't that surprised that Gala Masso came, came out on top uh, when they met last time. And I'm, I'm in that camp. And because of the price differential, therefore I'm with Gala Masso. Mm. Like I say, I can't split them. If they were both five to two, I, w I wouldn't know what to do. But one's mm. four to one and one's six to four. So that, that makes my mind up. What about you, Jason? I'm Blood Destiny. Okay. Yeah, I love the sire. I, I, I thought in, in um, Fairy House the last day to win the way he did. I thought it was a hell of a performance. He was really, really good. And, um, yeah, I think he looks straight forward. He's coming in there fresh and well. I think it was the middle of January he kind of won there. And um, I, I don't... I suppose we don't know how good he is yet. So but that's... Thank goodness William Mullins is running all three. I was yeah. going to say, one thing we all agree on, yeah. William yeah. Mullins is yeah. going to yeah, win. Yeah, but thank goodness, because if those three weren't in this for whatever reason, it would be a pretty dire contest because of all the dilution, of course, because the yeah. Triumph Earl has been split into about 50 other events. It's, um, it would be desperate stuff. Yeah. Gone are those days, Boise, when you had the Ick Dams, 30 runners, cavalry charge, all Not the fun of the fun. other races, is there really, that they can go for us, wouldn't you? Lassie Milk got a hard race too. Like, yeah. She did get a hard race to be second. Um, oh, yeah. Willie was, was very upset, upset with Townend, wasn't he? He went uh, crazy on course. Yeah, I don't know. She was running around people. screaming. If he had a one, then they probably would have said, oh, sure, he's a great fella. He... <laughs> Always the way. It's always the way, yeah. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. So. Uh, now, uh, let's just tell you about uh, your opportunity to win some free tickets to the Cheltenham Festival. It's quite difficult to buy tickets uh, these days. Uh, comment Cheltenham and your strongest fancy to win tickets to Thursday. I'm just having to peer over to see my monitor. Uh, so uh, the word Cheltenham, that's what you've got to put in. Comment Cheltenham. Uh, if you're watching on um, Facebook or on YouTube, in the comments there, just tap in Cheltenham and give us your strongest fancy as well. Why not throw that in there as well? And that will give you a chance to win um, tickets. Uh, those are Tattersall's Club Enclosure tickets to Thursday on the Cheltenham Festival. I'm guessing it's a pair. I'm guessing you won't have to go all on your Todd, but, you know... It's worse, worse, worse fates, isn't it? Um, but uh, hopefully uh, there, there, there'll be a pair for you. Now, uh, our friends at Betfred are offering you some price boosts as well. Let's see what Fred has up his sleeve. OK, 7-2 to two, Facile Vega. The boys are all over that. Uh, we haven't done the Arkle yet, but when we do, I'll confirm that 7-4 to four, Jean Bon should certainly be taken. Uh, Honeysuckle, 5-2 to two for the Mayor's Hurdle, pushing her out a bit. 2-1 to one in Nergimin, and Jamie Codd and I have already explained that Nergimin will win the championship. So 2-1 to one is very fair indeed about the winner. I mean, uh, yeah, people might... Yeah. In argument, will win the championship. Right, John Bon will win the Arkle, by the way, as well. If you if you want another good uh, thing for the course of the week, but again, we've got a fascinating uh, tussle at the head of the market. John Bon, second favourite with Betfred, currently behind El Fabiolo, Dysart Dynamo, four to one. Appreciate it, uh, seven to one. Um, 
Actually, put us out of our misery with Banbridge. Where is Banbridge going, Kevin? Um, Do we know? Most likely the Turners. OK, yeah, yeah. so we'll come back to him for the Turners, which is good. Let's concentrate on the arc. Let's concentrate on this, this tussle uh, between the front two. So let's start with you, Matt. You love a head-to-head, a, a, -head, a big smash-up. Are you with one or the other or looking elsewhere? I'm definitely with John Bon of the top two. I think he's the classiest horse in this race. Obviously a great second, while a distant second, to um, Constitution Hill in the Supreme, where he was deliberately ridden to try and draw the sting out of Constitution Hill. Subsequently, of course, it, it's been shown that it wouldn't matter what you did, Constitution Hill would have won. We didn't know that at the time. Um, Aidan Coleman, as, as anyone who's watched my little feature with him will know, um, absolutely loves this horse. He is, of course, bred to be an absolute star with his close relationship to Duvan. And I suspect there might be an element of Fassel uh, Vega with him in that I'm not absolutely sure this front-running thing is really brings out the best in him. And I think if he can just get a good lead from something, that could make him look... Because I think there is a little kink in him. We saw a little kink last he's season at Haydock. He's been warm in his workout yesterday. Yeah, the there's a little kink. He's a little bit kinky, yep. Sean. I don't mind that uh, myself. Well, so I'm told, yeah. I'm all for that. <laughs> so I, I'm I, told. I tell you what I like, I, I tell you what I like about it. It goes back. Goes back sorry, you're talking about Jumbo. Sorry. It goes back to our previous conversation about uh, <laughs> uh, uh, aggressive um, fencing. Oh, this dear. horse is fast. He's hungry. He's hungry. He jumps the fence. He looks for the next one. And he, 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 let me have that one. Right, had that one. Where's the next one? Whereas El Fabiolo... For me, I'm a little bit lukewarm on his jumping, a little bit on all fours landing, a little bit slower away than, than this horse. And I think that's what it will come down to, because mm. we know there's nothing between them. They met at Aintree over hurdles, there was nothing between them. They're, they're, they're almost the same horse in terms of raw ability. Yeah, look, it's tricky this, Sean, because, look, John Bond, up until the last day, had looked, you know, the best, probably the best jumping novice chaser we've seen. Like, he was lovely, neat, clever, scopey. And then last time, he, he just showed a different side to him. So in the match at Warwick, yeah. yeah. I know Warwick's a tricky track and all, like, but he was jumping out to his right there, he which we hadn't right, seen yeah. from him before. If anything, it's, for me, looking back at my notes, like he, you'd notice him going slightly the other way. So that was slightly concerning. And like he hasn't been in really deep over fences yet. Whereas El Fabiolo, you know, that Irish article was, uh, that was a horse race. On paper in, it was. Did end. it not fall apart? Part of it because of the strong pace and quite a few of them well, dropped. Sort of them out, you yeah. know. And El yeah. Fabiolo, I take your point with his jumping. Like he can be a bit wild, he can be a bit wild. And John and Bond's already beaten him, um, only narrowly. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. It's a bit like the, the Energum and Shishkin class. There was We knew going into last year there was nothing much between it. This is the same. It's, yeah. it's a rematch, which is really exciting because we know there's not much between them. But I think John Bond's a miles better chaser than the Hurdler. Possibly. Well, we're about to find out, aren't yeah. we? I, I guess. Where are you on this, Jamie? Uh, John Bond, all day long. Yeah, I think um, Yeah, I think he's had a lovely little prep there. I, I, I think Nicky kind of just had to run him in Warwick. Two horses. He, he just tipped around. That's all he did. It was a day out. That's all. Um, he won't take on Dysart Dynamo as much. And uh, I think he'll just win. I think he's a class horse. He beat him in entry last year and he'll beat him again. I know. It's easy this game, Kev. Do you know what I think now? And now it's not one of my stronger views yeah. now, but I just, I'm envisaging a situation where John Bon and El Fabiolo will be doing a lot of looking at each other and they might just forget about Dysart Dynamo because. They might it, get away from them. And he's quick mm -hmm. and it's a shorter trip at Cheltenham than it is at Leopardstown. The track will suit him better. Like he's a low, aggressive, fast jumper uh, and he's a good horse. And if they if they gave him if they spotted him six or eight lengths turning in now, it he he I think it'll give you a very good spin for your I money. I still think they'll pop out with him, but maybe they will. Maybe they will. Yeah, let you him know, on a small bit. Yeah, they just won't take him on like they did yeah. in the in I'm, the Supreme. Okay. I'm not just saying this because Kevin's the advisor to the stable, <laughs> but I think Bambridge has a much better chance of picking up the pieces in the Arkle than he does in the Turners. No. Um, I don't know. Look, he, he looked like two miles was no trouble at all at Cheltenham earlier in the season. He shaped a bit differently at Leopardstown. As mentioned, like that was relentless, brutal, and he did get quite outpaced. And if you ran him in the Arkle and the same thing happened again, you'd be kind of saying... To would yourself, anything, would, like weather or anything, change your mind, or is he he's pretty much set turners now? I think one of the big guns would probably need to come out of the Arkle okay. for, for it to be... For it, okay. Like, he, the entry will be left and it'll be okay. left to late, but it, it'll probably take something like that to get him back in the In Arkle. the meanwhile, Matt, if you want to text your 
CV yes. over to Joseph as a, as a racing manager instead of Kevin. I can't Archer. imagine. I can't do a worse job. <laughs> I'm sure he'd love to hear. Let's him. face facts. Let's move on to the Brown Advisory, <laughs> what we used to call the RSA. It's the three mile novices chase. Now, this is this is a horse, Jerry Colomb, two to one with Betfred. This is a price, depending on where all these other horses are going, which could significantly short. So we need you on this, Jamie Codd. Is Jerry Colomb going here, and where is Mighty Potter going? What what's the latest? Yeah, no, Jerry Colomb will run here. Yeah, that's every, his only entry, actually. Is it? I think. Uh, it? Yeah, I think that's. I think, I think he's not in the Turners yeah. or the yeah the Turners. Um, yeah, no, he he'll run here. And what about Potter? I I'd say Potter will go for the two five. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. Right. In that case, Jerry Colomb goes off five to four for this. Yeah. Uh, he's a hell of a horse, this lad. He really is. He's a lovely horse. He's very uncomplicated. You know, he's won. He's won around Sand, and the last day I thought was a good test of his jumping. Uh, that held up, got past going to the second last and then comes back and wins. Um, he's a really, really good horse. As I said in, before, he just knows how to win this horse and that's what I love about him. He's, 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 he's a joy to have around the, the yard at home and um, yeah, I, 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 think he, I, I think he'll continue to win. Um, I really do. I, I, you see, I, I, there's a lot of disagreement here. I, 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 I can see this horse tightening right up but but maybe not, because there are other contenders in here. Kevin, you... No, I, I really like the horse, and I have done all the way through. Like, and I'd say we, we've never actually seen him right-handed over an... Ob sorry, left-handed over an obstacle. I actually think we'll suit him, because he seems to go a little bit that way. I, I, yeah, yeah, he can, yeah, no, I, I don't think it'll matter, mm. you know. But you're right, he hasn't really been left-handed. And look, you'd think drawing out his stamina can only help him. The ground is is an unknown, I suppose. I know Gordon said that you know he ran a Turles over hurdles last season, and it came back a small bit rattled, but it was quite, it was reasonably quick that day. Um, it, like it wasn't terribly soft at Sandown. Now it was kind of no. dead ground. So I, I'm not picking at him too much, but I do like the real Whacker. Yeah, and I think he, he's been a little bit underestimated. Um, I thought he was fiercely impressive, dropping back to two and a half at Cheltenham last time. Um, look, the level of form wouldn't be as good as what Jerry Colomb has done, but. Like, geez, he's a very good jumper of a fence, and yep. he operated really well around there. Um, and going back up and trip, his stamina has proven. Um, I know he's got a different profile, but I wouldn't like to underestimate him now. No, I think he'll, no, he'll give he's, Jerry he's, a bit to think about. He's not underestimated in the market either. He's, I mean, sure he's, enough, bang, yeah. he's, yeah, yeah. he's, he's bang there, the real wacker, and he's, he, he's doing it. Uh, what about you, Matt? Well, I'm feeling sorry for Tom O'Brien because I think Michal Nolan's going to win this on Time Hill. He's currently a six pounds worse horse than he was at his peak as a hurdler and he didn't look a natural chaser and that's understandable because for a long time time he was never going to go chasing and he's now nine so he's not the typical novice chaser but class wise I think he's in a different realm to Jerry Colomb and the real whacker etc I think he's a much classier horse and there was a real sign in his grade one win last time that he was getting his jumping and his act together and that was at Kempton and that's not a track, really, that's going to be up his street. You know, he's a Cheltenham-type horse. Um, he will probably be a bit high and a bit stickier to couple, but he's finished second in a stairs hurdle, and I would suspect that none of these could do that. And I just think he's, he's by far the most classy horse in this race. OK. Strong vote for Time Hill from Matt, the real whacker uh, for Kevin and, and, and Jamie and I both in the Jerry Colomb uh, camp for that one. Turner's Chase, right, we know that Bambridge is going uh, for this, or we hope that he's going for this, which will make him in very interesting indeed. But, of course, he's, he's going to now we confirm run into Mighty Potter. How good is Mighty Potter, James? Let's start with that. How good is this horse? Yeah, he's a very classy horse. Like, you know, really, the only bad run he has is Cheltenham last year. So, you know, but he ran too bad to be true, I felt. You know, like he was beat after two hurdles. And... The training performance that Gordon put in to get him back to Punchestown to win the way he did in Punchestown, I thought was just phenomenal. We we all thought in the yard after after Cheltenham the horse would be put away, but Gordon nursed him back and got him got him to Punchestown. I thought it was really really good performance. And what he's done this year has been faultless. Uh, a few jumping errors in Fairy House in the Drinmore, but I think he just got idle. Down over the four, four out and three out. I think he just got idle, waited for company down over the last two fences. Then he was brilliant. And the same thing in Leperstown the last day. One mistake, uh, the fence past the stands. I think Davy gave him half a squeeze, put down, but he was still clever away and quick away in, uh, from the back of it. Um, this horse, he just, he's all quality. And 
we are hoping that he is the Gold Cup horse for next year. Yeah. I was, uh, is he potentially the best horse that Gordon's taking? Yeah, yeah look at he is. He is he's a classiest. Um, I think he could drop back to an Arkle. Mm. He could go up to a um, uh, up to the three mile race either. I, th I think he's in that league. Um, I just hope we see that he puts in the performance in Cheltenham that w what, w what we've seen at home. Um, Mark Foley rides him out every day and he keeps a lid on him. He's not simple now. He, you know, there is a lid on him and he keeps it on him very, very well. So, um, yeah, I just hope he goes to Cheltenham and shows what, what we all know he can do. OK, so that's how good their horse is. How good is your boy? Um... I think he's very good. You know, he won he won the Martin Pipe last year. Um, no, he didn't. He, he was brought along steadily. You know, he wasn't in, in the the heat of the fire as a hurdler. So I'd say the Irish Arkle was a fair shock to him last time now, um, and he backed out of it. But he did come home well and look up and trip. He'll find it a little bit easier. Um, look to me, he has a solid chance. Um, I think Mighty Potter definitely has X factor about him. I've always loved him. Um, you could tell that Gordon really loves him and has done from an early stage. Um, like he's still only a six-year-old. Um, you could pick at his jumping a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a, a career best from him in that regard here, where there's more pace in front of him. I think lack of pace has been a bit of a, has, hasn't been a help to him. You know, it's, it's a so classy during yes, the race, isn't he? Jump, yeah. you know, and, and the Drinmore, like my abiding memory of that was every time he jumped forward, Jack was almost saying, come yeah. back, come back, come back. He didn't want him to be making the run, and then he ended, still ended up in front too soon because he was just so much horse. So so much, Davey was the same the last day yeah, in Leprous Town. Like he could have been halfway down the back, he could have been in front. You know, yeah. he's, he's just a very, very classy yeah. horse. So I don't want to pick at him. It's just the, my, my issue with him is his price, that's all. Yeah. If he bolts up, it wouldn't surprise me. I'd put up appreciated against him. Um, who's, who's three years older, which is kind of a bit mad when you yeah, think about it. It's, it always raises your eyebrows when you actually look and see how old appreciated yeah. it is, doesn't it? But yeah. he's very good. I, lo I loved his jump in the first two days over fences, over two miles. Like my view was his jumping technique would translate really well to further if that's what they wanted to do. I was a little bit surprised they went to Irish Arkle. And in fairness to him, like in, in a hot, hot race, he hung in there for a long time. Yeah, he was but I, there, wasn't he? But I think asking him to hang in there burst him a little bit late on. Like, I think he'll be much happier over two and a half with, with the pace and rhythm of that race. I think his jumping will adapt really well. And look, he's just a very good horse. And the gap between his price and Mighty Potter's price is enough to swing me around to him. Because for, for Mighty Potter, you can pick at him a little bit jumping-wise. Appreciated has been near enough faultless. Yeah. And he's very clever. And I, I think he'll, he'll run a very big race. OK, so appreciate it. Even over Benbridge... He yeah. tipped a single Joseph horse so far. Oh, look, he, he's got a Very good. Cagey. He, no, he's got a good solid team, yeah. Sean. But there's none. Like if Scarlet Dove, Scarlet Dove had got to the mare's chase, now I think I, she would have been one I was picking. But she has a little yeah. setback, unfortunately. Um, but look, he has some real solid chances. You'd be thrilled if he came away with a winner. Absolutely. But I don't think yeah. there's one that you could really no, nail fair. your colours to. There'll be a few in the handicaps as well. We'll come back to those uh, before the end. What about you, Matt? On this? Well, boy, see, I'm not like Kevin Blake. Well, I've got nothing really to add. I don't on. just talk <laughs> for hours. And I've got nothing really to add to what Coddy said. I think Mighty Potter will win this race. And this distance is absolutely... He's going to be, I think, a bit of a specialist at this distance. I know Coddy thinks he'll stay further in time. But I think at the moment, this trip will bring out the best in him. That's all I've got to say. I don't need to waffle like so. I, I, I'm just looking forward to seeing him. And like, mm. I, like you said, I, ho I hope he can turn up uh, uh, this time around. Uh, the Mighty Potter, very, very exciting. Uh, now... Price boost time from our friends at Betfair. What have they gone for here? Well, Fasal Vega, a lot of love for Fasal Vega around the panel from uh, um, Kevin in particular, was keen with him. Matt thinks it's an absolute good thing, Fasal Vega. You can have 7 to 2 with Betfred on the price boost. John Bond, uh, 7 to 4. I'm with him. And Ergman, 2 to 1 for the champion chase, uh, also makes some appeal. Uh, we haven't got to the mayor's hurdle, which could be one of the deepest of the. Of, of the, of the Championship races, ironically. We'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, but don't forget, you can find everything you need to know on the At The Races mega site. Oh, yes. All the runners and riders. All the There's loads of stable tours. There. Some of the best stuff on there is the stable tour <laughs> uh, stuff. Just for you, I've Boise. I'll tell you what else is on there, which is worth reading. Oh. Stride analysis <laughs> and section analysis. Is that part of the Simon, Simon, Simon Rollins. <laughs> I knew you'd like that. Um, tell me what he said about your horse, Jamie, about... Um, the mighty pop. <laughs> um, they've, they've measured his stride. Did you know this? 
<laughs> race of Australia, described as monstrous. Yeah. There's only oh, like two or three yeah. horses that have in recent years been anywhere near his stride length. Yeah. There you go. Interesting. Mighty Potter's ravishing stride. Interesting. Oh, yes. Interesting. <laughs> I touched on the mayor's hurdle. Shall we, shall we move on? Um, <laughs> Any other uh, races, will you? Let's do the Mayor's Hurdle first, shall we? Let's do that, because I tell you what, <laughs> if this lot turn up, what a race this is, Epitont needs oh, to... The God. poor, the poor champion hurdle. Oh, yeah. did absolutely deprived of a bit Look of depth, thanks lot. to this honeysuckle. race. Right, the first <laughs> question Animals. is, who's, who's still got the love for Honeysuckle? Yeah, definitely. There we go. Yeah. 100%. Well, everyone's always loved Tony. No, no, you, you know what I mean. Who's, who's, who's going to be still well, with you it can't have this race? You can't have a love for the horse in this race, but you can still love the horse because okay. you sh if you've Let won the last it. two champion hurdles, you have to go and defend okay. your crown. I'm not really interested in our, where our affections lie. Uh, do we like this horse for this race is what I mean. Is it, and, and Jamie, you say yes. She can yeah, win the Smears yeah. She can you go out and convince no, Colleen, no, to be I, quite frank. I felt, I felt in Leperstown the last day, if, if she was gone, she would have down tools and finished fourth or fifth, and she didn't. She battled away up all the way. Like, State Man could... Could win a champion hurdle. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. you know, he's a young pretender coming through. Uh, we don't know how good he is, and he's he's beaten he's beaten her, and that's it. Um, like her form from the Hatton's Grace, you'd have to imagine the two and a half. The ground was a little bit softer, and her form was never outstanding in the Hatton's Grace before. You know, she 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 only always, she kind of scraped home a few days. So dropping back to this company. Bar Epitant, who she seems to have the beating of. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know what else is there? Well, I think I think it's deep. I think it's deeper than that. It's it it is deep. I agree with you. But is it is it deep with that form? Like I think we've I think we've got probably a few kind of one fifty mares. Like can Honeysuckle do a one fifty five now? I think she probably can. Oh, still. definitely. 100%. Like, like, I don't think the Irish champion hurdle really went for, you know, they went steady. The ground was probably quicker than ideal, considering they went steady over two miles. And in fairness to her, she stuck on well enough. But This is the point about the depth of it, because you can look at it and say, wow, look, there's loads of grade one form in here. Loads of grade one, and it looks really, really deep. But Jamie's point is a, is a fair one. If she's run, she might have only run, what, seven pounds, eight pounds below her peak, potentially, behind Stateman, if Stateman's a, a, you know, a, a champion hurdle mm. contender in most years. Yeah. In which case, is there anything in there, although they're grade one mares, that would actually beat Honeysuckle? Yeah, look, I think... Or is she going backwards? I'm, I think she's... You'd fear that she's going backwards. Like, I don't think she was herself last season. I think she was five pounds below her best last okay. season. She's probably five so pounds she's below. So she's sliding again. back. Yeah, and that's, okay. uh, sliding isn't a great place to be at the Cheltenham Festival, really, no. in a grade one. So while it wouldn't be a shock if, to me if she won, do I want to back her as the fav? No, I'll wish her well and go with something else, to be honest. Yeah. OK. You can tell us what in a minute. What about you, Matt? Would you, would you be... She's five to two, let's say, Honeysuckle. Are we with her or against her at that price? Um, I, I wouldn't be backing her in this race, whatever. But I don't... I mean, she can clearly win it. Obviously, she can win it because she should be in the champion hurdle. She can obviously win this, this little you race. You don't think she can win this, she should. Yeah, but she can't win the champion hurdle. hurdle. So why can't she win? Well, like, well she can't win what, the champion what's... hurdle because she's not running in it. Cause... Yeah, but... Why, why are you knocking her for going for a race then that she can win at the Shelton Festival? Because no one knows whether she can win this or the champion hurdle until she runs in it. That's the whole point of the sport. If you just say to yourself, well, this is easier, then you never have any rivalry at all. This is the problem. Yeah, but there is you... a rivalry in the champion hurdle. You have Stateman against Constitution Hill. She's the defending champion, Goddy. It doesn't matter. She's can you not... imagine if, 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 a, if a heavyweight boxer who's just won the world title says, you know what, I'm never going to defend my, ta my title, but I'm going to go down uh, a level just because someone's putting up a big prize. You'd be absolutely shouted off the, the canvas. It's like, it, it, it's ridiculous. This horse should be given her chance to go out in a blaze of glory. That well, might that's be, exactly that, what they're doing. That for might mean finishing fourth. But you go out in a blaze of glory and you'd be brilliant and you've defended your crown. To go for this, it's, a, it's pathetic, it's pathetic. It's a, it's a small bit, it, I, I can see where Matt's coming from because the thing is, Sean, if she wins the Mayor's Hurdle, right, it's a little, we mentioned it earlier, it's a little bit like Vautour when he won the Ryanair. Yeah, yeah. You're coming back what in, you've, had, been, you've yeah. had a winner at yeah. Cheltenham and you can't help but think to yourself, God, you know, what if she, if she bolts up in the Mayor's Hurdle... Blakey, like you're legs, right, we'll like, all oh, cheer. God. You see, people will take this the wrong way. If she wins that... 
I'll be screaming for her and saying, come on, girl. I'll cheer her home. Yeah, but you're it doesn't mean it's she... not pathetic. Yeah, you're wondering how, oh, how would she have gone in the champion? You know, what if Constitution Hill falls, yeah, she... falls at the first and Statement, you know, <laughs> oh, runs what below if... four? No, 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 you can't. But, but you have to, you have to do it from the it, start. But it is horse racing, though, you know? No, things can no, happen. no. I, I, well, you, I think you're in that case, you'd never have a four in Avon. I mean, why yeah. you never have a hundred to win winner of any race, and you get lots of them. Uh, I like Love Envoy each way, by the way. Okay, Love Envoy each way. I like, uh, I like Brandy Love. Brandy Love. Yeah, I'll, for, I'll forgive that the last day. What, wrong way around. Needed the wrong. We just put those in because you forgot to ask. I me. started no. by asking what, where, where was the love. Bit of love for Honeysuckle. We got brand no Love Envoy and Brandy Love. And a bit of Brandy the, Love. Order. So we got I all bet. the loves covered in the end. Let's move on to the Ryanair chase. This is all about the shish, isn't it? Shishkin four to five. I think we could make a case for having him considerably shorter uh, for this race. Personally, I think he's probably a class Two's above up. these. Yeah, a bunch of these aren't going to run. Where, where are we on this? Who, who's uh, like this is a, a classic? A few Fury, price Fury Road will run. Conflated won't. I don't think Fakir Duderi will. Very easy, this. The Lord may not run. Back Shishkin to win and back Fury Road each way. Yeah, that'd be... That'd why, be... why bother with the each way bet? Shishkin's going to win, isn't it? I'd say he will. Well, because he could fall over if, the Well, bus. look, if he repeats what he did the other day, Sean, yes, he probably wins and wins with his mouth open, but he, he looks so good at Ascot and, like, you know, no jumping left. He looked the best version of him we've seen for ages. Well, you know the key to that? The trip. Possibly so. That's not, is Possibly it? Possibly so. But you can't forget that he has had various physical issues. Yeah. And when they do have that sort of mileage on the clock and, uh, and, and physical issues, sometimes after a big one, you're not guaranteed to see it all again the next time. That's the only worry. Yeah, yeah. If he does that, he wins. Mouth open, easy. Yeah, yeah. Wait, blowing kisses yeah. to the crowd. But um, th that's the only little niggle in the back of yeah. my head. That's a small enough niggle for me to get involved with. Fair enough. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. a short price player, but I think I think that's very fair. Where are you on Shishkin, Jamie? Envoy Allen each way. Oh, OK. Yeah, oh. I think they can buy farm from Down Royal. It's strong enough in a very ordinary Ryanair. And, um, yeah, at 10 to 1 or whatever price he'd be now, I think, you know, forget about the King George. Um, but he has to have a small chance on, on, very on small. that. He's a, yeah, a small chance of being played. Very small. Well, how many horses are going to run? Exactly. Mm. Um, We're betting three We're trying to find the winners, but no one asked us to come in tonight and tell people how many horses are going to run. Well, it's very important from a betting point of view, isn't it? Because if you can bet now three places mm. at 10 to 1 or 8 to 1 or something like that and, and five horses line up in the race, you are a very happy punter indeed sitting there on yeah. the day. I predict there'll be more than five. Well, that's fine. but like, it's... And then Vial has won there twice. Yeah. Jamie's trying to find us a little bit of value. And, uh, As you have, great John, and fair play to, to you. You've put up two to monsters tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they'll still be running the next time we <laughs> reconvene, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, what else have we got for you? We've got some uh, free bets to give away, and it's easy to win a free bet or to put yourself in with a chance of winning a free bet. In the comments section, if you're watching on YouTube or on um, uh, Facebook, Facebook Live, uh, just put win in the comments. That's all you've got to do. Put win, and you are in... Uh, the draw to win a £50 free bet courtesy of uh, Betfred. The good news is you don't have to put it on any of our selections. You can put it on whatever you like, anywhere, uh, uh, as far as I know. So get stuck in with that. What else do we owe you? We did the novice chases, but we didn't do the national hunt chase, <laughs> did we? The, uh, which used, we used to call the four-miler. The three-mile sixer. The three-mile sixer, we have to call it now. Uh, a really dominant favourite here, dominant owner as well, actually, who's Triply uh, represented this year, I think this is uh, Donnelly. Uh, Gayard Dumenil, it's another sort of with or against horse, I suppose, Kevin. Are we, are we with or against? This or? has just become the dullest race at the Cheltenham Festival, hasn't it? Yeah. I think last year's renewal was just the dullest race I've ever seen in my life, and it'll be probably more the same here. You know, Gayard de Mesnil would have a great chance in the Brown Advisory. There looks like they're going to run him here. You know, he probably should have won an Irish National of, of a big, big rating last, last season. Um, he's the best horse. He'll go around on the bridle and win easily, won't he? Uh, well, I hope he wins easily. So I don't the want these amateurs getting in, involved in a close finish. <laughs> uh, he's one of the slowest horses you'll ever see. Oh, I, it, he's like he's well, like the he's like the sixer. sort of jumping version of the flat high definition. Really, he's just he's he's an absolute boat. And he just plods around at a very slow pace, which is exactly what you need for this yes. race. What would it cost you to buy a boat like that? I don't know. He'll win. He'll win. <laughs> I don't know. But what's Jamie Codd going to ride? Uh, it's whatever Gordon wants me to ride, yeah. Um, he has chemical energy and... Um, Manila Crooner. Manila Crooner, yeah. I like him. Yeah, no, lovely. Really uh, well. Yeah, lovely. But, yeah. like, Gerard Manil is just... 
different. That's perhaps. different, yeah. I, 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 hate, I hate to say it, but he is. He'll have a brilliant he amateur as well, won't he? He will, that will help absolutely. Him. He will. Yeah. Not as good as Jamie. He's sitting right next to you. Yeah, but he's been around quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, a long time. <laughs> Knows his way around. He's really um, good what else do we owe you? The cross country again. Oh, here we Dominated go. by a couple yeah. of horses, this, isn't it? Delta Work. Dominated the, the by champ one trainer. And Galvin. Um, next in on five to two between them. They have the market by the proverbial short and curlies. Um, Delta Work got the better of his stable mate last year, Jamie. Does he retain his crown or is Galvin a big threat? How do we see it? Mm, school Galvin last week over there. Yeah. How'd he and go? He's done loads of school in the home. Uh, very well. Uh, look at his farm this year has been... It's been bad, to be honest, for him, like what we thought he was last year. Like, he just hasn't gone... But he seems in good form. Um, tried something different with him. He went back to a kind of a pre-training yard there and he done a bit of um, dressage and all that. And it seems to have helped him. He's got strong and schooled him last week and he was good. So th th this is an attempt to reinvent him a little bit and re yeah, re reignite yeah. something. Yeah, 100%. And he's a classy horse. Yeah. Um, yeah, he has a chance. Drying ground. Yeah. You sound Cold. confident. I, what does that smirk mean? That smirk means either he's much it's, better than Delta Work. No, he's not much better than Delta Work. But these terms, but yeah, ground on, on ground, factor, ground, ground dry and yeah. ground, this horse is, you know, and if he does, you know, sometimes being there for the first time in that race, yeah. if they take to it, he's definitely, he's way good enough to win it anyway. Um, like it did rain last year mm. and I felt that without the rain, would Delta Work have won? Mm. I'm not so sure. I think Tiger Roll would have come up very strongly last year. Yeah, what a story that would have been. That's why we have to race them, you see, to, to make <laughs> you know, them go and do it. But, yeah, Galvin is, is he's there for a reason, and I think he, he definitely has a great chance. Yeah. I think people forget how good Delta Work is, though. Like, there'll be people watching who thinks, hold on, didn't Galvin, wasn't that the horse who beat a Plutard? He, he must be the best in here. No, 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 no. Delta Work is a multiple grade one winning horse. He is, he is in no way inferior to Galvin as a chaser. But the difference, as, as the Coddy has just quite rightly said eloquently, is that Delta Work is massively experienced at this stuff. So you mix the two together and he, he surely beats Galvin. But would prefer some rain. Mm, which Stick does, me on that track. None of that. seem to be on the horizon. There might be a bit Cheltenham Festival week, I think. If it comes, it will I be during racing. I saw suggest some snow in the, yeah, That's yeah, next week. in the days before next week. Cheltenham. Yeah. Yeah. Very soon. Next week, I, I think yeah. Galvin will be very tough to beat. Mind you, if we keep it, um, on all this hot air. Yeah, but th yeah. there's only about like 10 chasers rated higher than him in Ireland at the minute. Like He's a seriously high-class horse. But he hasn't been himself. But the well, cross-country fences have, need to... You only have to go back to October like, and he's, he's smashed up Run Wild Fred, who's a good horse, you yeah. know. Snow, Snow Leopardess did bounce back to form last time. And you ran better, she, yeah. I, I reckon she'll Much run well in this. Yeah. A big price. Mm -hmm. She's uh, a lot of love for her. A lot of love. A lot of love for her. Um, I have... Yeah, I'm interested in Galvin, um, mm. particularly if the, if the rain stays away. Let's move on. The champion bumper, I've got no clue what's going to happen in this. Um, what's, what's the word? You have your ear to the ground, Kevin. What's, what, what do we think? Um, look, it's for me super impressive. First time, what did they beat? Not a whole lot, I'd say. Um, connections, visual impression, fab for the champion bumper. Um, I thought a dream to share was absolutely brilliant at Leopardstown. John Kiley. Um, was was oh, well was bred by um, Brian Gleeson, owned by him. Has now changed hands. He'll run in JP's colours. Uh, I thought he was brilliant at Leopardstown, winning a deep bumper um, in great style, ridden by John Gleeson, who's a very good amateur. It's going to ride him again, I think. Yeah, he keeps the ride, and you wouldn't worry about that at all. He's a very promising yeah. young lad, and I think this is a proper horse. He's flat bred. Um, he's very impressive. He, he should be the fav for me. That form is so much deeper than what it's for me did. And um, John Kiley, what a story it'd be. Absolute hero and a legend uh, at home and further afield. Um, God, what age is he now? He's 80, 80 yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And going as legend. strong as ever, I'd be, I tell you, it'd be some thrill um, if, if he was to win at Cheltenham. And with this horse, I think he's got a right chance. Mm. Right name as well for the headlines and all that. Yeah. What about you, Jamie? What? Um, I, I'm not sure, really. I, 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 lo I love the story of a dream to share. Um, you know, bred by the Gleasons, they're they're a lovely family, and and um, 
we've we've some really good up and coming amateurs and John is one of those you know John Harry Swan a few of these guys they're really really good so for John to be getting a ride like that in a champion bumper it's it's brilliant and it's great to see him. I'm really happy he's riding it. Um, I love the mayor. I love fun, fun, fun. I um, thought she was really impressive the last day at Leperstown. Um, and I really like Better Days Ahead. I think he's... If, if forget about Down Royal. Um, it was a bit of a messy race again in Fairy House, but he won well. Um, he didn't run in, in it, at the racing festival and I think that's actually could be a blessing in disguise he's just really starting to come um, he got a fraction light after uh, Fairy House but he's gone, come back now and he's really really strong looking and his work has been really good the last kind of few weeks so I'd be looking forward to seeing him He'd be um, your pick of Gordon's? Yeah, I think so. I think I think he is, yeah. yeah. Um, really looking forward to him. And um, there's another horse there of John McConnell's, Enchanto Bruno. Um, really like him as well. Uh, one, Cheltenham, what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm just marvelling at Jamie Codd's poker face because uh, <laughs> earlier in the week we were talking to Gordon and he, he listed off the horses he has for the bumper. Yeah. And uh, we, we, gave him a little, we, gave, we gave a little squeeze and said, well, what, what do you think Jamie Codd will ride? And he said, well, I asked him the other day and he didn't take much time to say better days ahead. He was in no doubt. Oh, I thought you were going to give us Paul A. Phil and then, we, then, <laughs> no. then we'd have had a story. <laughs> better days ahead. Yeah. That's good. No, He's confirmed no, what he no said. Doubt. That's good. Buddy, you're That's remarkably good. silent at this moment. <laughs> have you been found out? Yeah, yet again. <laughs> um, so yeah, he does. I, I think I think he's really he's coming. Pleasing you? Yeah, he pleasing is. He is. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he, he looks like he's really just coming at the right time. Um, it's got to be a massive part of it for this race, isn't it? That, what's that? That's got to be a massive factor for this race, isn't it? Cause yeah. It's so little for us to go on. Just um, what they're showing him physically. But it, uh, it genuinely is a funny year. We don't really know what Willie's best horse is, and that's really interesting. My seven Patrick has been talking about it throughout the year, and. You know, he, Willie has been so strong on all the bumpers, but I don't know. Do they really know which one is the best? Is that a bad sign? I, no, I, look at. I think it. I think it makes it very competitive. Um, it'd be interesting to see what I think. Patrick will ride the mare. Well, maybe the weight. He won't do the weight eleven stone. Maybe he will. Yeah, um, I saw a bit with him today. Now where he seems up in the air still. Yeah, um, like Western Diego. Like there's, he's a lot of. And Willie will fire a lot at it. Yeah. He likes to win it, so he'll run a lot of horses. Um, yeah. So, but look at I think, mm. I think better days ahead. It'd be he's going to be a good ride in it anyway, definitely. Well, it's your yeah. ride, so let's wish good you man. well. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Better days ahead. I'm going with. That's mine because I've got nothing to go on in this race. You, Matt, if you want. I'm to having Chapo de Soleil to reverse the form with Coddy's horse. I, I suspect that horse wasn't quite at his best. And That's Mr. Rich, Mrs. Ritchie's horse, isn't it? Yeah, so I've gone for Champ, though, and Chapo. Uh, but um, uh, I, th I think this horse is pretty good. how you actually pick your horses. You just go on the names. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he gets in. Secret might, out. might get battered out, if, out. Uh, if they get a full field. Yeah, if they get a full field, he yeah, might. As a non-winner. Um, but you oh, are right. That'd, that'd be you a new right. low. One that'd be battered out at the champion bumper. Oh, you want a point, yeah. <laughs> He's, oh, well. he's probably a good horse. Non runner, no bet. Hopefully, he gets in for you. <laughs> um, Mayor's novices hurdle we haven't met. We, we, we touched on Lucia in passing. We think she's much more likely to go for this, don't we, than the. the um, uh, what was she in the. The, the Supreme. Mm. The Supreme and the. Yeah. Um, Come on, Boise. Uh, Lucia. <laughs> God's sake, man, get the words out. <laughs> Is she a good thing in this? I don't know. She's priced a, a little bit like she would be uh, in this mare's. I haven't spent a huge amount of time on this, Kevin, if I'm honest. She was, Lucia looks very she good. She was fiercely impressive yeah. last time, in fairness. She, she wouldn't be out of place in the Supreme, I'd say. Um, I wouldn't be picking her to win it, but she wouldn't be out of place. And I'd say if she rocks up here now, she's going to take serious whacking. Um, very visually impressive. You'd like the way she did it. She was just in, in a different class to them. They couldn't, they couldn't carry her into the race for long enough. And it was all over a long way out, so... Yeah, I think I think Nicky's got a good one there. Yeah, looks that way. Any other views on the mayor's novices hurdle? Uh, magical Zoe. Yeah, she mm -hmm. hasn't run since um, Down Royal. I think if if she goes here, she has a chance. She's an improver. She'll be ridden kind of to run well, and I'd say she's she's quite a good filly now. Um, we don't know how good she is, but she is quite good. And um, Ashro Diamond. I suppose Willie's for the syndicate. Mm. Um, 
for that um, uh, Blue Blood race and they're going to have a great day out with, with her. Uh, but Lucia has been very impressive. Yeah. Could, could we give the other Zoe a bit of a chance? Who? Prin Princess. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, she, she it sounds like she might run. Yeah. Group one winner on the yeah, flat. Yeah. Obviously, extremely workmanlike first time over hurdles, but... Mm. That would but, make for some fun interviews. Absolutely. And I'm not saying stuff. I fancy her, but I wouldn't yeah. like to be forgetting about her either. You know? No. Uh, not one to be written off, that's for sure. What sort of price was she? Oh, she was, she was down the bottom of your list there when it popped up. Mm. 10, 12, 14, mm. something of that order. That's not bad, actually, Princess. You're a Princess Zoe fan, Matt, aren't you? Not, not for, for this, this. no. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, I thought she should have won the other day, and I know she sort of kind of did win. Um, oh, yeah, she did win. It was a dead heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should have won on her I'm own. Sure if that counts as a yeah. win or not. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think Lucia is going to be in the champion hurdle this time next year mm. against Constitution Hill, defending his title. You're starting that campaign yeah. now rather than... No, well, I've always, I've always <laughs> loved that song, Night and Day. <laughs> a really, really, really good song. One of the Tony Bennett's, wasn't it? Or Lady Gaga, depending if you're... 100 or 20. I'd, I'd ask you to sing I it. I thought Gangster Sad Rap will be your thing the way you're kitted out today, man. Sadly, we don't have time. OK, <laughs> so uh, quite, quite a few votes for Lucia and a, and a couple of Zoes to consider as well. The Mayor's Chase, we haven't touched on. Oh, Allegri de Vassi and still Impervious there. <laughs> uh, dominating the market. <laughs> Jeremy's Flame brings experience up against those two. So, uh, But that trio dominating things. Um, Jamie, you got a view on the, the Mayor's Chase? Go on, Jamie. I've, not really. You I think said in the car park you had a massive view on it. And this one? Yeah, the mayor's... I remember you saying, I really... I leave that one to me, lads. <laughs> no, I don't think I did. <laughs> OK, must have got it wrong. Um, I don't... I, I, I like Imper, um, Impervious. Um, she's, she's not big, but she's, um, she's a great jumper. She tries hard and... Yeah, I, I, I just... I like her now. Um, okay. Jeremy Flame was good in what? Not where did she win in the UK? Um, um, I'll tell you. Where did she win? Hunting, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Thought was, yeah. I thought it was a better. great bit of placing by Gavin. I won't lie. I thought, I thought he picked out a very, very good race for. Her and um, but no, I like, I like Impervious. Okay. Rich, Rich thinks Allegory de Vassi will win this. Rich, Richie. Yeah, yep. did you text him? I did, yeah. Jumping, you'd be a small bit worried about just out to a right there. And, um, yeah, just just needs to improve on the jumping front. But um, Keep her out of trouble if something falls on her left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, impervious, I'd say impervious would, would have had a, a, chance in the, a bit of a chance in the arc, let's say, if they'd run her in that. Look at those plants. Um, Look at those ears. Sandry Sessa would love those. Yeah. Look at them. Big lugs on it. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a race I have a super strong view. That's fair that. enough. That's fair enough. Jeremy's flame, the, the kind of was you might stick in each way multiples on, on the basis that she should be very, very close. With to not so business. sleepy in that other one. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, um, yes, you not know. so sleepy hey. without the favourite each way. And of course, um, Saint Palais. Come on, the Palais. At a hundred to one is worth, uh, is worth sticking in your calculations, I think. Um, giveaway. We're going to give something else away. More tickets. Uh, which day is this we're giving tickets away? This is Thursday. Uh, Thursday tickets uh, being given away. You just need to um, comment Cheltenham and give us your strongest fancy as well. So Cheltenham and your strongest fancy. And you will be in the draw to win tickets to Cheltenham. Make sure you're free on the Thursday. And you can go along. Uh, uh, Tattersall's Club Enclosure tickets for Thursday of the Cheltenham Festival. Nothing quite like being there. So you do get along if you can. And uh, courtesy of Betfred, a couple of tickets up for grabs there. Um, right, we're not going to run through all the handicaps, you'll be pleased to know, because we're um, still coming to terms with the entries and all the rest of it. But let's touch on, well, what do we like? Um, I, I, well, I, I came up with a shortlist of three trainers that I wanted to keep on side this year. One is Dan Skelton, again. He, uh, winners are thin on the ground in recent years for the Skeltons in the handicaps, but they're, they're beating a large percentage of their rivals, which is what I want to see. Mm. Ben Pauling beats a ridiculous percentage of his rivals in the Cheltenham Festival handicaps uh, over the last three or four years, and it has about 13, 14 in the handicaps, so I'll be watching out for him. The third trainer I always watch out for in the handicaps at the Cheltenham Festival is Joseph O'Brien. Mm. You bat well. all of those horses in each race. All of those trainers' horses. No, there'll be oh. there'll be a starting point and a short list for me. Looking at, uh, right. at some of those some of those trainers that that out, sort of par in a handicap would be beating roughly fifty percent of your rivals. People who consistently do better than that. I'm, Gordon Elliott was the the benchmark for for years. Gordon Elliott's 
horses in handicaps at the Cheltenham Festival mm. beat a ridiculously high, something like 70% a couple of years and ago. And the handicappers started absolutely whacking up. <laughs> well, I tell you what, let's, let's touch on that, actually, Jenny, because this is more interesting than what I was saying about my stats. Um, Gordon Elliott last year, by his ridiculously high standards, wasn't so hot in the handicaps. And But I, I wonder if there's a whole kind of Gordon Elliott storm that's going to be unleashed uh, at Cheltenham in terms of... Competitive oh, no. horses in the handicaps. It's the, going to be the, better the, than the fifth. It's week. going to be better than last year, isn't it? Because Gordon Hill is not the type of fellow who will like come to... back again without doing better. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. Is he maybe. regrouping? Maybe yeah, regrouping. Yeah, possibly. Girding his loins. You must be delighted you're on the team, Coddy. Okay. Such enthusiasm. <laughs> for... Oh, I can't wait for Coddy to come in in the morning has to the, boost our morale. The, has the handicapper, English handicapper, been hired on Irish? It's difficult to say. I think he's been fair on the Irish because you lot get your horses handicapped in extraordinary ways. I, I think we've over-handicapped horses for a long time over here. We're starting to, to, to address that, which might be a bad thing. I think you might have touched on this. Yeah. Some, somebody touched on this. It was on the podcast the other day that some of the British horses might not get in some of yeah. these races because their, their marks have become many well, like they, As part of that quality jumps review, like they, they changed handicapping policy and they're trying to drop them faster and put them in lower exactly and and you're seeing it coming through now i, th I think it was an, uh, an overdue correction for what for, oh, anyway oh, we, we, no we, to come back yeah. we can't go down to come back to selection so that yes. we're not still yes. here at midnight yeah give us a hand um, uh, i like in the ultima remastered yep uh, who's just a consistent horse tough when he's on song in the boodles i think i like perseus way who I, although um, Jamie Moore actually told Connections that he didn't think he'd have won without a mistake, I think he might have beaten old Blakey's horse at Kempton the other day if he hadn't fluffed the last. Um, the Coral Cup, I like St. Sam, who's been pulling too hard in Ireland, but was second in a boodle once upon a time, and I suspect a Cheltenham tight race is going to be right up his sleeve where they go hard. Um, the Grand Annual, I think third time lucky, who was once thought capable of sort of winning an arc or maybe even a champion chase one day. He went off the radar and disappeared, ran some shocking races. You'll be glad about my stats on that, won't you? Yes. <laughs> Good. Came back to form last time when winning at Sandown. And in the per temps, I think the boss's Oscar has an each-way chance. So those will be my five handicappers. Who else has dig dug something out? No, I'll, I'll give you a couple. Please. I, I love the per temps. I love picking through it. You know, it's great fun. Um, and I went and had a real good look, and I was swerving around a few bigger price ones. Good time Johnny was one now. Yeah. That could be a right Tony Martin job. But, you know, you go and you watch shoot first. His win at Cheltenham in, in, in earlier this season. And he has won what was a strong handicap that's worked out well in the meantime, and he's absolutely danced in. Danced in. Like, get, got there way too soon. He, we make, mentioned it earlier, he won apologising. He really did. Um, and he's £10 higher, and I don't think it's going to stop him. Charles Burns has laid him out for this ever mm. since then. And Charles, I tell you, Charles could have a big week. He's got about five entries and four of them are single-figure prices. Yeah. And he, he's really good at his job. And I think this lad could, <laughs> could absolutely... I think this lad could absolutely oh, bolt If, if you think he danced him, what about that thing at Chepstow the other day, the... Um, Thanks for the help. Did you see that? Yeah. That was, that was embarrassing. He was, he was like screaming, not too far. But it was one of those... He needs with, to go up, doesn't with, he? ...would shoot first. He needed to go up yeah. to, you know, other, <laughs> at the, you know, the winning got him into the, the right rating zone for this. And he hasn't been, you know, because he's won in England, there was no okay. big surprise with his mark. And, like, I thought... Joe, of... Joe's just going to win that Johnny Henderson chase soon, isn't he? He keeps no. peppering the target a bit with that. You've got a few in there? No, yeah, possibly. But, look, I think my... My main thing with the handicaps, Sean, as a general point, is I think the English are, are much better in in the chases. I think it, in the it in the context yeah, of yeah. the way they've changed the ratings the last two years, there's four handicap chases at Cheltenham. In the top five of those four races last year, there was two Irish horses in total. Yeah. You know, out of the that's 20. a good angle. The, yeah, and they get and you look at the Whereas with the hurdles, maybe absolutely you, you, you favour the Irish, yeah. but you look at the markets for the handicap chases, and it's full of Irish horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I think going with the English is the way to go, and that leads me into my other main fancy in the handicaps is Rouge Viff in the Grand Annual. Okay. Similar profile to Global Citizen last year. It'd be yeah. it'd be unbelievable for Harry Whittington because he he got this horse going, did so well with him. Yep. The owner switched him to Paul Nichols, didn't go so well. Harry went to the sales, bought a Mac for new owners, 40 grand, and he's been bringing him along steadily this season. He's dropped like a stone in the weights. Like he's, he's literally he's literally yeah. 20 pounds well in. 
and I'd be shocked if this wasn't his big target. He's been very impressive around Cheltenham before. Yeah. Some might look at him and say, oh, you were a bit of a weak finisher, maybe. But he's a big old price. He's 20 to 1 or that. I like that. I yeah, like that. Rouge Viv. I can't let you go there without. What's your, what's your best shot in the handicaps for Joseph? What do you reckon? I don't think he has a strong hand, to be honest, really? Sean. And not being smart. Okay. Um, San Salvador in the Coral Cup would have a bit of a chance. He's okay. been aimed at it since he last won. Common practice got away well, I think, in the ways for the Boodles. Um, if he runs, not a certain runner. Um, but it's just pick picks and pieces a couple of chasers which again like I say I think any Irish chaser is up against up it against it. hasn't it been your job as the placer of the horses though to put them in the races where they'll end up well handicapped for Cheltenham he only has 25 jumpers man it's not a lot of horses it, to be trying to doesn't really need a race Cheltenham. planner then does he yeah, pretty much all entered for Cheltenham actually yeah. Yeah. about 23 or so entered uh, last time I looked uh, Jamie it was a nice simple question Gordon won't mind you sharing it with us uh, his best handicapped horse coming to the festival um, we haven't gone through them yet <laughs> What do you like? Um, I think Imagine could be well handicapped. Yes. Martin Pipe? Possibly. But I don't, I don't know where well he goes. Gordon is um, um, he's a runner in Dubai later in the week, so he said he was going to look at the handicaps. My, my worry with Imagine is that at the Cheltenham press conference today, Gordon gave that one up. And you kind of know when these people <laughs> give them to the public that they're never going to win. Such a silly. What did he give Imagine? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, if Gordon Elliott or an Emmett Mullins gives you one, you know that <laughs> that's finished Such a now. It, You know it. It's not going to win. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if we can get anything else out of uh, Jamie afterwards. Right. Uh, we've asked all the ch fellas here for their naps, their each-way selections and their lays of the festival. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do this, so let's see what... Um, Let's start. Oh, we're going to do uh, individuals at a time, and we will start. God, it's lucky so we rehearsed this, eh, Boise? Well, if only we had. God, in rehearsals, uh, Kevin, you were so good. Kevin Flake uh, is going to go first. So we want from you, <laughs> Kevin, a nap, I think, in an each way, and a lay of the festival as well. Yeah, a nap I went with shoot first. I, I think he'll go off the shortest prize, Fab, of any of the, the handicappers there, and I, I just could see him bolting up, Sean. To be honest, I like to put up bigger price ones generally for the nap, but I just I kept coming it's back. A four to, to one him. shot that wins by eight lengths hard held. Yeah, we like it. That's that'll fine. be that'll be yeah. fine. The lay I, I was actually jumping over Mac between John Bond and Lassie Mouth. I've gone for Lassie Mouth. No, yeah. yeah, wrong selection. I, I've gone for Lassie Mouth in the end. Um, look, there won't be as much depth there as you like to have an opposition for a lay, but I think there's at least two in there that are potentially better for her and. Uh, better than her and I think her <coughs> jumping just could get her in a little bit of trouble and each way as we just talked about a minute ago uh, Rouge Viff in the Grand Annual has just the right type of profile great story for as this well. race yeah, like great that. story Harry Whittington would be going around like Alan Shearer the <laughs> of if, imagine the satisfaction that would give him <laughs> and I hope we get to see it because I do fancy the horse It'd be fantastic fantastic right let's go on to Jamie Codd next and uh, same form for uh, Jamie here talk us through it yeah, Jerry Colomb. I just, I just like the horse. I, I really, really like the horse. Um, I just love the way he, he wants to win and he just gets the job done. And I, I, I just, I think, I know he's only two to one, but I, yeah, I, I really, really like him. GGC? Um, what? GGC? God given certainty? <laughs> no. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you can only do that once in your life. I can only apologise, Jamie. There's a typo on your graphic it says that shishkin's a lay that can't be right can it yeah yeah in um, the background there all you could hear from the producer was oh no <laughs> who, who spelt something wrong he was already getting the knives out shishkin. I'm, I'm nearly, horrible man shishkin. i'm nearly sure i laid him last year as well in the championship uh, well you're up you're up on the deal aren't you yeah. you've got money to play um, with after last year so that's fair. I, look at i just is he going to back it up he's obviously a very very talented horse kevin Rouse, um, the same. but i think Quit. that Matt is right. If they had any fate in the horse, they would probably run him in the champion chase. Don't tell him that. Um, or the Gold Cup. <laughs> actually, well, no, I don't know about that. But it's yeah, so I look at him. And each way, then I like Colonel Harry in the Supreme. He was fourth in Sandown in the race of Tamaras won. Uh, ground was probably plenty soft enough for him. Jumped the fraction left, got back on track the next day. Uh, just at a big price. Yep. And he Princess just, Zoe. He, he could be there down to the second last um, on good ground. And Princess Zoe then in the Mayor's Novice. I, I just, I, I, there's something about her profile I really like. Um, 
and I think that just at a, at a price, she has a chance. Yeah, she is a nice price. And Colonel Harry's a great pick at a nice price in the Supreme for us as well. So a couple of nice price ones there as well. Uh, Mr. Matt Chapman, what do we like? And what My we like? three are all very well-known names. Uh, Fasil Vega will win the opener and we'll all cheer and go crazy. Uh, we're seven to two with our kind sponsors today who will be crying. Uh, Honeysuckle, I wasn't putting her in as my lay, but I actually got, I got really oh, angry in this show just now. <laughs> so I just swapped it to Honeysuckle the because, Queen of Ireland. And because I'm upset. Two years just um, all over her. No, I mean, to be honest, I'll cheer her home if she wins. <laughs> I know you will. But <laughs> you have to know you less. There's been some lies told here in the last two hours. That is the biggest lie of all time. <laughs> we'll actually cheer her home, but you won't. You're a, you're a disgrace. <laughs> Lies. Absolute disgrace. And disparaging the Queen of Ireland. 100%. Uh, unbelievable. I hope one, one of those Some lies respect. wasn't old Boise being a bit ginky, but anyway. <laughs> um, very unlikely in the amount of light cray he goes around it. And uh, each way, I, I just think Manella Endo's a stupid price. You can get 20s in the in the village out there. I know it's 16s there, but you can easily get 20s Manella Endo. And I just think it's a silly price for a horse who's been first and third and beat Statler last time. Good stuff. Right. Second. My turn. Um, Second. I was I've, uh, John Bond. I've gone for at the prices in the arc. I think that's a bit of a match, and I think he's a better and more aggressive and quicker jumper than his main rival. Galopin de Champ. I don't like in the Gold Cup. I think his jumping is his Achilles' heel, and I can see things going wrong for him in the first half of the race. And I've got a lot of horses running for me. I think a lot of horses in the Gold Cup. Sam Pelle, fifty to one. His price from forty all the way up to hundred to one for the Albert Bartlett. And I love a horse at a price in the Albert Bartlett. Never be scared of a price. They don't always win. But we're ahead with uh, two wins in the last ten years. Come on, <laughs> so, come on, the bandy man. So, no, we're doing all right. Yeah, come on, Richard Bandy. Spoke to him this morning. All is well. We're on course, so that's um, that's good news. But I, I, I was torn with my nap. But Shishkin, you could go for and Nergimin, you could go for very easy as well. Charity bets. Uh, now, bet Fred putting up two hundred pounds. Wow. For us, have we got a graphic for that? We don't have a graphic for that. I'm going to stick my 200 quid on John Bond. It's going to Racing Welfare if it wins. Do you know where you're going and what yeah, you're betting? Yeah, I'm going shoot first, win only, to the Irish Racehorse Retirement Fund. Nice, cho nice choice. What about you, Jamie? Uh, search for glory each way in the Albert Bartlett. OK. And charity of your choice? Uh, Pieta House and Irish Indian Jockeys Fund. Good man. What about you, Matt? And I'm just going Facil Vega because I thought it's best just to have a winner in here. We just want some money. And it's going to the UNICEF Turkey Syria earthquake appeal. OK, uh, DEC will get uh, that, the benefit of that good cause indeed. It only remains for me to say a few thank yous. First of all, thank you for watching. Thanks for getting involved. Thanks for your tweets and your selections and your thoughts on everything that the lads have had to say. But thanks particularly to our guests, to Mr Matt Chapman, uh, to Mr Jamie Codd and to Mr Kevin Blake. Um, you know where to find them, uh, depending on how their investments uh, perform. Don't forget, of course, the value of your investments can go down as well as up in terms of conditions apply. Thanks for watching. Bye. The, at the race this Cheltenham Festival preview with Betfred and most of all enjoy the festival. Bye.